because of the Iraqi military tendency to lose billions of dollars worth of advanced U.S. weaponry to the Islamic State and because Iraq's increasingly checkered humanitarian rights record. The $200 million in humanitarian aid announced will focus on refugees displaced during the ongoing war with the Islamic State and is likely to be less controversial, though since it too will flow through the Iraqi government, expect there to be lots of eyes on the equity of distribution between the Sunni Arab, Shiite, and Kurdish refugees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a group of guerrilla artists who placed a bust of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden atop a column in a New York park only to have police confiscate it are demanding for the sculpture to be returned. The four-foot, 100-pound bust of Snowden was placed atop a column that is part of the prison ship Martyrs Monument in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn on April 6th. The name Snowden was also attached in large typeface at the base of the column. The NYPD removed the statue mere hours later and said they are keeping it as part of the investigation into the incident. The anonymous artists now say they want the sculpture back so they can put it on display through all the proper channels. New York City Parks Advocates President Jeffrey Croft told 1010 WINS in New York that the artists want to apply to have the sculpture put on display through the city's Arts in the Park program. Croft said, Arts in the Park has been a long, long, long held tradition and having the city seize a work like this simply just doesn't make sense. We feel it is sensitive and it sends the wrong message. But it takes months for the application to be approved, so a local gallery in Manhattan has agreed to show the work in the meantime. Croft, along with attorney Ron Kuby, sent a letter to the NYPD asking for the bust to be released. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Boko Haram militants have kidnapped at least 2,000 girls and women since the start of last year, turning them into cooks, sex slaves, and fighters, and sometimes killing those who refuse to comply. A 90-page report from Amnesty International based on dozens of interviews with witnesses and escaped abductees comes a year after the group seized more than 200 schoolgirls from Chibok, a community deep inside an area of northeastern Nigeria the fighters claimed as their caliphate. The kidnapping and a video showing the captured girls dressed in dark hijabs soon afterwards provoked international outrage. But the majority are still missing despite Western pledges to help track them down and a Canadian attempt to broker their release. Boko Haram's leader Abukar Shikeu claims the girls have been married off to his fighters. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. We turn to Washington, D.C., where America's roommates are holding a rally as part of their new One Vote Doesn't Matter political action campaign. The rally, which drew thousands of roommates, ranging from the guy who keeps all of his groceries in his room to the guy whose name the lease is under, is just a part of a surging grassroots movement to spread the message that one person's vote can't make a difference if you really, really think about it. You know, this is like the most important election of our lifetime. We just want to get the word out that it's already been f***ing decided in some smoke-filled boardroom. You know, I pretty much minored in poli-sci, so I think I get this stuff. Joining us now is Jason Copeland at a rally in the nation's capital. Jason, how would you describe the energy there? Yeah, hi, Andrea. I'd say it's a definite uh, chill vibe. Uh, I just saw the roommate whose only friend seems to be his younger brother and the guy who just has an air mattress in his room passing out flyers together. Now, the roommates do make some interesting points. The electoral colleges, it is weird. This is the Onion News Network.
Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about, well, whatever you'd like here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Kentwell. 855-450-3733. And our username on Skype, which I'll be going to in just a moment, is lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. That's our username, and you can call in there and sound a lot better. Let's go to George calling in on Skype. George. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, it's going it's, well. What's uh, on your mind? I'm having so much trouble. I actually had some car trouble. I had, I had a, a bolt broke off. I was trying to change my thermostat. Do you have any advice on how I might be able to get uh, the, the bolt well, back on? Well, I do have an LSD laced ecstasy pill covered in with lace with Viagra, if you want to have, if that'll help. Well, I mean, it would certainly help with the feeling of hopelessness that I have with my car half dismantled in my driveway. I think but go ahead with your thoughts. I think what Cantwell's trying to tell you, George, is you don't yeah, ask yeah, talk no. show hosts how, they, how they're doing. I, I was just waiting for him to say something like that so I can come up with my little response. <laughs> What's but, on your mind, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, today, uh, the tax day thing. Um, Basically, I decided, you know what? I'm not giving these bastards a dime of my money. It's already been over a year since Uncle Sam has um, had a penny from me. And I was like, pretty much, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> right there. And that's because right now I did my taxes, and Uncle Sam essentially says that I owe them $1,800. $1,800. $1, yeah, $1,800. I see. And then, the state, and then the state of Virginia wants another $1,500. And I'm just like, I don't get that kind of money to give over, and he said, "You know what? Just go and I'm make, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna live my life uh, as free as I can, I can right there, because like, no, nah, these guys are already insane. They already, um, basically, basically Virginia already um pulled me over and gave me a fine for not giving this move over law thing, which the where." Legally, I think the worst thing about the um, the the income taxes is that I think it's the Thirteenth Amendment. It might be the I think it's the Thirteenth that uh, outlaws involuntary servitude. Now, the intention there was to uh, outlaw slavery, but if you've got to fill out their tax forms, doesn't that turn you into an unpaid bookkeeper, um, or you've got to hire somebody to do that uh, that work? And you got to pay that person to do your taxes, which is what I had to do. If, if I was to if I was to force uh, somebody to do bookkeeping work for me in my in my household, uh, it was uh, you know as high as forty hours my wife uh, would uh, spend on taxes in the past, um, and. You know what, what? Who compensated us for that? That's yeah. that's uh, you know that's involuntary servitude from where I sit. Absolutely, I I stopped communicating with the IRS in uh, I want to say 2006 uh, or 2005 maybe even, and it was for entirely non ideological reasons. I just plain didn't understand what to do. Well, at first I worked as a um, I had always worked on the books, you know, and they are taking taxes out, and then I get a return at the end of the year, and I never really thought about it. I'm like, oh, the government yeah, see, gives yeah. me this check at the end of the year, and it's then nice. one day, one year, I ended up working on a, for a company where they paid me on a 1099. They're not taking taxes out. Yeah. I get a bill at the end of the year, and I really, literally didn't even understand what was happening, and I was like, what do you mean I owe you money? I this is ridiculous. I'm not paying <laughs> you. You're supposed to give me money. You're the government. What is this? <laughs> and, right there, the case with me, Chris. Exactly right there. And I and did. then and then what what went on to happen was later on. Then like I didn't pay that. I was like, get out of here, right? And then later on, I was working again on a W two or whatever, and I'm paying taxes or getting taken out of my check every week. And then at the end of the year, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do now. Like I don't know if I should file. Do I have to go back? Do I blah 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 blah. blah. I don't. I have no concept of what I'm supposed to do, and then I, I wasn't even a libertarian or really had any fundamental ideas about it. But I was like, "This is really scary that they're, you know, this is a system of uh, uh, taxation that t it takes money away from me against my will and then threatens me with imprisonment, literally because I don't even understand what they want." Exactly. And they were ignoring uh, this year, ignoring up to 60 percent of people calling them with questions about how to fill out their taxes, ignoring them. And yeah, those they've those done people. studies of, uh, you know, the questions that they do get answered. They uh, they get them wrong. Common questions. Their help board gets wrong. 50% of the time. That means if you <laughs> dial the IRS, the chance of you getting a correct answer from them is about 
One That's out of five. <laughs> amazing. I, I, you know, my my father tells this joke about the weatherman. You know, he's like, it's good to be a weatherman. How often could you be wrong that frequently? Wait, what other profession could you be wrong that frequently and maintain your job? Well, as it turns out, my father worked for the IRS, <laughs> and, and uh, that's the other one. <laughs> My mom, my mom used to translate paperwork for them and stuff like that into Spanish. But yeah, it, it's insane. And on top of that, you know, the state of Virginia has already extorted me for over, like a hundred bucks um, just because uh, over or a ticket I got, which was completely BS. It was the well, violation of this move over law thing, where I was like, I looked at the well, law. I want to stick. Had, oh, hold on, uh, George. I want to stick to one t- uh, topic here because this is a big one. I mean, this is tax day, exactly. and uh, I'm sorry you got a ticket, but um, I really do want to stick to this uh, this this topic of. Of, uh, of you filing your taxes. So d- aren't you expecting them to come after you? What kind of paperwork are they getting from you? Are they getting a 1099 from you? Uh, I, I got a 1099, yeah, from Uber and Lyft, exactly. 1099R, I think it was what it's called. Okay. So they're going to have yeah, some number. Different. So they're going to have a number that they believe that you owe them, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, now, I know you are an avid traveler. You've been, you've probably been to more countries than uh, most 10 people combined. Oh well, I want to say most ten people, but come on. I even looked into that though, uh, of trying to deduct some of my world travel, and it's like even if I could, there's only be a small percentage of it, and that's like retarded also. So uh, some, something the government can do is take your um, take your passport away from you if you uh, don't pay. Don't can't they? Well, I already got my passport, so it's not like they can't take it. They just won't renew it in my well, passport. Are you sure popcorn. about that? Because, um, you know, just because you have the piece of paper doesn't mean they can't make it flash up in whatever international system they have that pa- scans passports saying invalid, invalid, mm-hmm. tax dodger, it's incarcerate, probably incarcerate. Probably something- it probably has to be like a couple of years, and it has to be like over a certain amount. I'm pretty sure, like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it's like to me, it's like it's not. It's less than two thousand dollars. You know, it's like there are so many more people who get away with not paying them a lot more than that. You know, well, maybe, true. maybe, probably, maybe if you're lucky, uh, maybe if you're lucky, they'll cancel your passport while you're out of the country, and then they won't let you back in. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that. Go to Acapulco and be roommates with Angel Clark at that point. You know, I know you were looking into that, Chris. I'm listening to some of your shows. I don't know which is more disgusting, giving Uncle Sam money or donating to some social justice warrior cause. <laughs> now, um, as, as far as uh, the as, as far as this goes, I mean, you know, the 1099 is a piece of paper that they're going to have, and they're going to have an expectation that you owe them money. That's going to be a relatively easy layup for them. They don't have to spend any time auditing or anything like that. So if, for instance, I chose not to uh, to, to fill out a uh, uh, an income tax form um, here, uh, this this, this year, if I chose to do that, they wouldn't really have much in the way of paperwork from me because I run my own business and that sort of thing. Some businesses you get 1099, uh, but Free Talk Live generally does not. So, and I'm not, you know, and Free Talk Live is yeah. owned by another organization, which uh, then, you know, takes care of liability in that way and pays me. And, you know, like it's very, confu- it's confusing in that way. Um, you you don't have that luxury. You're getting 1099 straight up, and they're going to be like, okay, here's the quick math, and you owe us this. Pretty much on that. Yep. I, it's insane, too, because, yeah. I hope the best for you, uh, George. I'll, I really do. Thanks so much. Give us a call at 855-450-FREE. This is a rapacious dangerous organization and um I, you know i i support uh, the concept that you know ian has of, of not paying in the best you can the quakers had a uh, had a philosophy where they didn't pay in for war taxes but they would often either uh, put their money aside for uh, in case the government when the government wasn't in war and then they'd send it to them i don't know i mean none of it makes any particular sense to me money's fungible and i don't believe in giving money to uh violent organizations yeah and you're only funding the next war by doing that or paying back the debts incurred during the war by doing that um but you know and of course not avoiding uh, paying a government during wartime gets more and more difficult i mean it's been about 14 years of this stuff so far i mean and that's uh not including all the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, uh, the, the U.S. has never been out of debt. Uh, some people will claim that during the Jackson administration it was, but that's uh, highly arguable. So you're still paying off 18 War of 1812 stuff. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. 
here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Talk Live. Three-year-old child lost his arm after being viciously attacked by a pit bull terrier earlier this month. Gosh. Now the incident has moved a state lawmaker to author legislation that will effectively ban the pit bull breed in the entire state of Oklahoma. Wow. Wouldn't um, all of uh, Mr. Wesselhoff's constituents be a little safer if, if we all just couldn't have any dogs at all? That's true. It would guarantee that no one yeah. would uh, be bitten by dogs. Right. And then and no what cats. What about cats? They scratch people. They, sc- they sc- do scratch people. And it... You know, there, it, it's, it leaves a nasty infection. It could, certainly. It, it certainly. We should ban infections, too, while mm-hmm. we're at it. I mean, while we're protecting everyone from everything. Birds can carry the flu. We know yep. that. You know, so. we should just exterminate all, all animals with teeth. <laughs> well, forget the teeth. <laughs> Birds have no teeth. I say we kill them all. Uh, just every animal. Yeah. Okay. What about insects? You could just sign a law that bans mosquitoes. <laughs> That'd be great. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Phone lines are open to you. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's tax day and... I can imagine some people are going to want to talk about that. <laughs> this system of taxation that we have that uh, requires people to essentially become bookkeepers for the government for two, three hours. I, I remember I did the 1040 easy in the past, and that was relatively quick and painless. Uh, but, you know, that was – I was in high school last I did that. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's, so, it's so crazy. It's so oppressive. It's so confusing. It just might make you want to drink yourself to death. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> chwine.com. Cameron Hughes, uh, the pr- proprietor of CH Wine, 
It's uh, it's even got his name in the title there. Chwine.com. What he has done is he has gone around to great vineyards all around the world, and especially in Napa Valley, and he's bought these high-end wines from these high-end winemakers, and he's selling them at grocery store wine prices. Now, right now, he's got a special on a Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, what he's calling Lot 439. And this one is from a premium uh, wine producer, and... It's basically a $100 bottle of wine, essentially, that you can get for, well, 20% off of their low price that's already 75% off of that cost. So it comes to 20 bucks for this awesome wine. Chris, you just had some. I had it on uh, on Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I had a, I had a little bit during the break, and I and I wanted to take the smallest little bit because I didn't want to you know get tipsy at the beginning of Free Talk <laughs> Live, but it uh, it it is a very uh, you could it tastes like a quality wine, right? right so like, right. I mean, this the is few the times thing. in my life I've had a quality wine. I know what it tastes like. Exactly. I don't I don't usually drink quality wine. <laughs> I buy boxed wine at the grocery store, and I buy cheap whiskey at the state liquor store, mm. and I drink PBR, right? <laughs> and so I taste this, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> these uh, these rich folks really, uh, they're... They know how to live. They, they, know, they know how to live. They know a good thing when they see it. And this is uh, Cameron Hughes. He makes it available to uh, folks like us. Yep. Like I say, grocery store prices. Um, and it's... Uh, but but you get the highest in wines. It's really, really awesome. Go to chwine.com. And to get this special, you're going to need my coupon code. chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left. You click on it. You enter FTL. FTL is in Free Talk Live. And then... You will see a uh, lot 439 right there, and there's all kinds of other specials. You get free shipping as long as you get three bottles, and three bottles makes perfectly good sense, and it fits in the box just right and all that stuff. Free shipping and um, 20% off select bottles. So there you go. It's great. FTL at chwine.com. Let's go to Mark calling in from New York. Mark, you're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, gentlemen. <clears throat> just calling about taxes. Um, for this would be the sixth year, I guess, uh, I've been filing the 1099 FU. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I'm not terribly familiar with that form. Um, <laughs> well, I, you make, you make it up yourself. <laughs> that's uh that's good. Now, are you actually filing paperwork with the IRS in, in a way to, um, um, uh, achieve a response out of them, or are you talking about a mythical form does, that does not actually get submitted? The latter. Okay. Because, okay. I mean, you do hear, like, uh, there there are people out there with these sort of schemes, right, that you listen to uh, uh, some of these things uh, might, uh, for lack of a better term, be uh, categorized as sovereign citizeny, and there are people who think that maybe if you just file the right forms with the IRS, that, you know, you can not only uh, avoid taxes, but you can become fabulously wealthy, and that is something that scares the life out of me. I've decided to send them a letter this year, um, and it said something to the effect of, I'm going to see if I can draw it from memory. Um, it said, uh, I've decided to send you this letter uh, opting out of your taxes for this year, and uh, I just want to make it easy for you to find and hunt me down and imprison me. So I've given you my address and telephone number and uh, social security number and brought it to your attention with this letter. That's kind of what it's like filing these forms with the IRS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you're you're basically informing, giving them all of the information that they need to come after you. Right. Uh, I'm not paying. Here's here's a little note to let you know. Yeah, like I moved to New Hampshire and like you know changed my driver's license and that sort of thing, and uh, you know, well, you have obligations to inform the federal government of where you live and who you are and what you make in blood. I'm like, I don't really feel like calling the federal government today, you know. <laughs> Indeed, Mark, have you uh, have you received any negative ramifications for filing this 1040 fu uh, six years in a, in a row? Oh, that's right. It's 1040 fu. I forgot. 1099 uh, no, fu. Whatever. Uh, I don't make enough. Uh, you know, it's mostly stuff sold on eBay or Craigslist or private deals. <clears throat> I haven't shown an income for that long. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, used a uh, uh, fake uh, resale tax number for the past 30 years. Now, I don't use it all that often, but on um, big purchases, uh, I'm more apt to use it. Now, um, I, just, I, I think just you bring up. The... Go, go ahead. 
I just fill out the uh, the form, the the, the resale uh, blanket certificate, and uh, put in the the business name and the tax number. And uh, you know, thirty years that's uh, that's quite a long time to not have any repercussions. Now that is to uh, avoid sales tax, right? I mean, with that. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, resale. Yeah. So um, the. The thing that makes us sort of a wonder on this is that you brought up the idea that you don't have a lot of uh, income that's reported to the government. I think this is really important because a government is, you know, it's a legal organization. Legal organizations work with legal facts. Now, when they get a 1099 form, that's a legal fact. They get your W-2, your W-9, you get all these things. These, are, these become legal facts. When you fill out an IRS form, that's a legal fact. But I'm kind of curious. This is not tax advice. This is just me being curious about something. Is, is if you, Because you, you can go back and file old tax returns if you're late or whatever. Um, and if you ask them, hey, what is the uh, you know what information do you have on the money I made in say 2006? And if what they give you back is something that amounts less than ten thousand dollars, and you didn't make anything more, if you didn't report anything more than that to them, then I don't think you have a legal obligation to file. I believe that if you make less than ten thousand dollars, that you do not need to file to them file their the, you know the form. So they're going to have to prove that you made more than that in order to sort of go after folks. I think it's um, this is you know I, I did some research on this. I think it was two thousand. I can't remember what year it was, but um, not too long ago I did some research and. There are about 300 million, a little over 300 million people in the United States. There were 144 million tax returns filed. Now, some of those are joint with uh, husbands and wives, but it still gives me the impression that uh, probably about a third of the population is not filing. They're either too old to care, too young to care, or not making enough money to file or they just are dodging, basically. Or just plain have no clue what to do, as is too. the case with myself. And um, those, and of the people that do pay in, I think that this is phenomenally important. Of the people that do pay in, only about half of them, when I say pay in, only about half of them um, actually pay income taxes, U.S. income taxes. The others get money back from their form through the earned income tax credit and uh, head of household exemptions and things like that. So... Uh, you know, most people don't actually pay income tax. Mark, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Do you want to talk about taxes? 855-450-FREE. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com.
Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org where you can contribute via various methods including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. It is tax day here in the United States. Now, Free Talk Live is an international program. We've actually had calls from every continent on Earth. Yes, for those of you that, that love to count up continents, that includes Antarctica. And, um, you know, people listen all over. And many countries don't have to deal with this crap of uh, tax day, this nonsense. I mean, I, what I think is so interesting about tax day is, is that for the if you average out the amount of income taxes for the amount of people that pay, um, tax Freedom Day doesn't come until sometime in May. And that means that here on April 15th, you're still working for the government. If you, you know, if you're giving about two thirds of your money to, um, if you're keeping about two thirds of your money, that means one third of it is going to some government organization. And, well, that might be a little tough for you. You've worked pretty hard since January 1st. So I get it. I understand. Now, many other countries have different systems of taxation. I don't know one yet that doesn't have some kind of uh, system of taxation. Um, would be nice. But uh, I think that one thing that stands out about the United States' uh, income tax is it's uh, – so they obligate you to pay income tax whether you're in the country or not. So if you're outside of the country and you make more than $100,000 a year, I, I don't know what that's like, um, <laughs> and <laughs> they expect you to pay them money for stuff that you may not even earned in the United States. You just happen to – they just call you their citizen, so therefore you're obligated. You can in some cases have never set foot in the United States. You can be like a dual citizen, uh, maybe Canada. There's, we've had stories of people who are in Canada who are getting letters from the IRS – expecting to be paid or they were just like born to american parents or something yeah, like one american parent one canadian parent that kind of thing dual citizenship and they all just slap that citizenship thing on like hey well, your dad was an american and now just, you owe us money why not just go and slap the label uh citizen on all the sheiks in uh in arabia and say hey you owe us money too yeah, I think that maybe uh, the worst thing they could really do to ISIS not is not go to war with them, but 
tax them. I mean, if you impose the American income tax system on ISIS, that would probably put a stop to it. <laughs> it would probably enrage them. <laughs> um, ExpressCoin, I want to tell you how to get cryptocurrencies because I can tell you, cryptocurrencies, if they get adopted widely, it's going to change the way taxes are collected entirely. And I think this is one of the things that scares governments about cryptocurrencies. Yeah, they'll be they'll be collected by beggars on the street. <laughs> Can you please give me money for warplanes and bombs and germ warfare? Express coins is the best way to get your cryptocurrencies, whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dashcoin, Dogecoin. They make it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're very low cost. Um, they're a licensed money services business. You get your cryptocurrencies with a money order check or wire transfer. You just start off at expresscoin.com. Whether um, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they make it easy for you at ExpressCoin.com. They actually have an app over there, too. If you use the coupon code FTL and you purchase less than $40 worth, you can use uh, you can get no fees at all. Now, their fees are negligible, generally, but ExpressCoin.com will give you no fees if you use the coupon code FTL and get less than $40 worth. So there you go, ExpressCoin.com. Let's go to Mike calling in from uh, Oregon. Mike. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Uh, while we're on the subject of, uh, of stealing money and stuff, I uh, forgot to mention this yesterday when I called in. Uh, I had an encounter with police back in 1997 when I was living in New Hampshire. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I had gotten my license uh, March of 1997, and I had my parents a long you know, station wagon. And were you driving while young? Coming, oh yeah, I was okay. 19 when I when I was when I had that. And uh, so I was in Canton, New Hampshire, and I was at a four-way intersection on 175 and 49. And I made a left-hand turn and then yield to oncoming traffic, and a woman hit me. So I was found to be in the in the wrong. So of course I don't have a vehicle. I'm scared of what's going to happen. You know, just completely down in the dumps. So October comes around, and I'm at home, <clears throat> and I get a call from the, the Campton Police Department. Hampton? And okay. Campton Police Department, yep. And the cop says to me, hi, uh, we, uh, you got into an accident back in uh, August of 1997, <clears throat> and in the state of New Hampshire, and bear in mind, I know nothing about the system. I know, I mean, I'm a 19-year-old kid. I know nothing about anything. And he says to me, we have a, a law, a statute or a law or a regulation in New Hampshire where uh, if you were found guilty in an accident, there's a $75 fine. I was like, oh, okay. So I told my mother about it. <clears throat> we went down to the bank. We got out $75. And I go, we, my mother drives me to the police station, and I knock on the door to, you know, I have the money to find out what, you know, what's going on. Right at this time, I had two police officers answer the door, and there's two of them, and they're kind of, they're standing inside the police department, this is a very tiny building, and they're kind of like barricading themselves in the door, so, you know, no entry kind of kind of stance. Uh-huh. And I, says, I was told uh, there's a $75 fine, and stupid, he's like, yeah, that's correct, and stupid me, I just hand the $75 over, and that was it. Well, $75 in so cash. Seventy-five dollars in cash, and again, I knew nothing of anything of how this sort of thing works. Uh, I knew then about what I know now. I would have definitely researched this sort of thing. So, then so you happened, bought these guys a really uh, nice lunch. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and they had that, you know, that whole sort of thuggish stance. And a few years later, I go to. Uh, try to lower my car insurance, you know, to see if I can get, you know, my car insurance lowered. Did it and take 15 minutes? I, no. <laughs> no, a little longer than that. I was on the phone with do it. my car insurance company, and uh, they said to me, okay, we see your, your, you know, your accident back in 97, and then there's on October 25th, other. And I was like, what's that? And they said, we don't know. And I couldn't figure out what other was. So then I called the DMV in, in Concord, and I asked them. And they says, we don't know because all it says is other. And the only thing I could attribute to it was the encounter with the police department of me handing $75. That is the only thing that I could figure out of how other, and I was being charged 
on my uh, car insurance for this quote unquote other. What do you guys What do you guys make of this? I th- I, th- I think that's fantastic, and I and I I really I hope you try to like check with another insurance company because it sounds to me that if somebody's charging you for other <laughs> that they should be doing business with them <laughs> it sounds like a terrible idea to give those people money say well what is this that you're charging me for and they say i don't know then you say then i don't know why i should pay for it yeah well i mean i i had asked them about it and they didn't know and then so i go back and look at my i had my driving history pulled up when i moved to oregon i needed a copy of my driver's insurance and uh, history and it's no longer on there. So even if they were to go back, it, it's no longer on there. So I mean, it's irrelevant now. But I was just wondering what other would be, would well, it be contributed? Would it be? So you know, let me get this. Like, let me let me see if I can make this straight. So there's an incident of you paying seventy five dollars to a police department, and does this other thing does it does it have the number seventy five dollars by it? What I mean, it's what what is it claiming the other is? I don't know. That's the thing. Is I don't know if it was that, but that was the only thing that I could kind of attribute it to. It sounds to me as though they're they're talking about some sort of traffic infraction or something like that. Now I don't know if maybe you got some kind of a ticket at some point and don't remember, but then again, like even a traffic infraction will usually show up on a driver's record as whatever traffic infraction it was. Now it's interesting to me that you're saying this because we sort of had this conversation a couple times with a caller into the show who says like he's he was concerned that this traffic ticket form that he's seen has this field other where an officer can write in some other infraction, right? Like it doesn't, it's not going to have the entire traffic code. And I said, usually there'd be a statute filled in there. And it sounds to me like you're describing a situation where there wasn't, which is like idiocracy. Sounds like uh, we're clueless on what this uh, thing might've been, Mike. I, I, you know, appreciate it. If uh, anybody wants to call in, they can do that at 855 450 free and uh, you know, you take your stab at it. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website FPP.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com and the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about, you're free to call in and talk about whatever you wish here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. Check out our archives. We've got Free Talk Lives going back for free for years at archives.freetalklive.com. You just go there, pick a date, and download it. It's just that easy. We make it easy for you and free, unlike all the rest of those shows out there. It's archives.freetalklive.com. And then you can go and like take audio clips of us out of context and make us sound terrible. It'll be hilarious. There are soundboards uh, available at the BBS, uh, bbs.freetalklive.com of Ian and I that you can uh, make us say all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> Um, there <laughs> certainly, uh, plenty of people that have taken us out of context and make, made, uh, you know, little songs and music videos and all kinds of things. And that's, we're not going to sue you. I can't wait until like the, the Christopher Cantwell soundboard prank audio starts going viral, right? When people are starting to take my little rants out of context and calling up bank and saying things, the IRS maybe. Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I hope you, I hope you get so popular. Let's talk to, uh, Dave. Calling in from the internet. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I think other is we got an other sucker to pay us every month for something that didn't exist. They must have been in cahoots. Maybe it was a, a boss hog insurance company from New Hampshire that was in cahoots with the cops. Who knows? But for this guy to just go to the cop shop and he had to knock on the door... I mean, I never heard of such a thing. Well, New Hampshire uh, is a little, we're just a little bit country up here. Yeah. And well, generally, I mean, uh, but yeah, it's like going to the police station and paying a fine in cash is a, an extraordinarily right. unusual thing. But then again, you got to think, like most people don't have regular interactions with law enforcement, right? They're not, these are not the Ian Freemans of the world who are constantly doing battle with the state, right? Uh, so somebody gets told like, you know, you've been indoctrinated your entire life to obey the government, and here's the government telling you to give them money, and you're just like, "Nope, the art guy." Okay, you yeah. know, I calm down there. There's a story in uh, New Hampshire not too long ago. I think it was a woman in Concord got a phone call, claiming to be the Keene Police Department, and said that, uh, you know, hey, you know, you got to pay some money, or we're going to issue a warrant for your arrest. And she said, oh, whatever for? And he said, well, you know, it seems that there was some mix-up somewhere, but, you know, you've, you've got to pay the fine, otherwise we're going to come and arrest you. And the woman was like, okay, you know, how do I pay? And he's like, well, you know, you could just uh, give us um, uh, Western Union the money here, yeah. you know, something to that effect. And the woman did it. And then the guy called back and attempted to get her to do to give them more money, at which point she got suspicious, called the Keene Police Department. The Keene Police Department informed her that, this was some sort of a scam, and there was a, an a article in either the Concord Monitor or the Keen Sentinel talked about this, that somebody's calling up people and claiming to be the police and saying, 
wire us money or we'll arrest you. And people are so indoctrinated to just say, oh, police, you have you, whatever you say, that people actually give it to them. And, well, let's not forget that, you know, people get pulled over by people in fake police cars wearing fake police outfits. Yep. It happens all of the time. You're raped, robbed, and rolled under their cars. It, it happens <laughs> It happens often enough. And it, what's 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 so weird about this is, is that, A, the police will act like you are Satan, like you are the enemy if you treat them like they're not the police, like they don't have some kind of authority, uh, if you treat them in that way. However, they will get the same time on the other side of their mouth. They'll say, well, you know, got to always be certain that you're dealing with a police officer because it's real police officers like me that have authority and not those other police off- people, just silly people in silly cars with, you know, bad dressing habits. Um, you know, <laughs> Right. And, th- and then these lunatics have the have the nerve to g- do no knock raids and kick down people's doors in the well, middle of the night to throw in flashbangs prison. in their baby's crib and be like, ah, well, you know, this was a perfectly justified thing for us to do. How dare you shoot at us? And when you shoot at them, you go to prison for the rest of your life. I mean, when somebody busts in your house in the middle of the night and you shoot at them, Somehow or another, that's supposed to be your fault. Well, we actually have had a couple of situations where guys did kill cops in no-knock raids, and thankfully they they were actually acquitted or the charges even dropped. There are, it has other police, there are other people that are on death row for it, though. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Go ahead, Dave. We're in trouble, guys, <laughs> after all that, right? <laughs> Indeed. I mean, how, how do we reverse all of this? It's it's really gotten, uh, you know, quite... Uh, I mean, frightening when you think about it. I mean, that is the the question on the tip of everybody's tongue, and the answer is not nearly as forthcoming as the question, is it? Right? We're all right. trying to figure this out. We're we you know we all came to New Hampshire and tried to join this community of people, and we're going to write this ship and da da da. And it, you know, sometimes it doesn't seem to be working out that way. And and I, uh, it it can it can make a man feel rather discouraged at times, but. Uh, There's more hope here for changing things um, than there is, from what I can tell, any place else on plan- on the planet. There's, uh, you know, things are happening here and, and stuff is changing. But uh, I think that one can find free- more freedom in one's life by probably doing the permanent traveler thing. But most people have jobs. You know, they're plum- if you're a plumber, you can't just travel around all the time. You've got to have one right. place and do business there and uh you know, it just makes it that much more difficult. It's it's too bad Cameron Hughes doesn't ship to Mexico because I, I don't sure know, that, that Acapulco thing is sounding better by the day, man. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I just know, uh, you know, we're in trouble. And uh, look, at we got ISIL uh, camped out in Juarez, Mexico, you know, right over the border, uh, Fort Bliss, El Paso, Texas, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Got, I, I, got, I know nothing of this. It would seem like. Yeah, I check mean, it out. Yeah, I, Infowars is there. I mean, it's been it's been all over the internet. Um, you know, uh, ISIL, ICE, uh, I is whatever they call themselves these days. You know, it's just an offshoot of uh, Al Qaeda, uh, Al Qaeda. They have been trained by our CIA, by our military, and you know, it, they're here. You know, they're right over. That's why we have wide open borders on our, our, our southern border, our northern border. Everything's open. And, you know, America is so open. So, if I still wanted to attack Fort Bliss, and, and I, I, that would be a really stupid thing to do. Well, I don't think they're going to attack Fort Bliss. I'm just saying they're right outside in Fort Bliss's backyard and nothing is happening. They're not but doing nothing. Mil- there, are, there are millions of Mexicans in this country, and I should say Mexicans and Central Americans, um, right. that have uh, crossed that same area. If uh, right. if some people with some level of training and equipment uh, wanted to cross it, it'd be, it should be that relatively easy. Well, I right. think that's sort of the point that he's trying to make here is that, you know, the, the, the country acts like it's so uh, – the government acts as, oh, it's so concerned with uh, national security that they have to listen to all our phone calls and fly spy planes over our houses and read right. our emails and do all these intrusive, lunatic, crazy things. But they're like, oh, you know, the borders, <laughs> you know, we'll talk about it, but we're not going to do anything about the borders. And I'm not saying that they should, by the way. I certainly don't want to, I don't want the government manning the borders because that'll make it very difficult to get out of here. But uh, I would say that uh, it, it is sort of telling that uh, they, they put on this whole security state apparatus and give, you know, bearcats and armored personnel carriers to the police in Keene and Concord to, to deal with, uh, you know, a terrorist threat while they're supposedly the, the world's— 
and mankind's enemy number one is just south of the uh, United States Mexico border. Uh, it it does look rather insane. That's all I got. Fellas. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Eight eight fifty five four fifty free. I got to say, I am skeptical of these claims of, because I, I, back in the 90s, I was, you know, to some extent plugged in, uh, to a small extent, to the Liberty community. And at that time, we were always claiming that there were Russian troops. People were claiming there's Russian troops doing uh, operations in the United States. And I, I think that this is just a, a just shtick that uh, these Liberty media organizations, these conspiracy theorist media organizations do to get uh, people sharing stuff on Facebook and that sort of thing. I mean, I don't believe for a second that ISIS has any kind of major operation south in Juarez, Mexico. I don't know that the claim was that there was a major operation. I actually, I, I listened to uh, Infowars today. I, I, okay, good. I, I had not been doing that for a very long time, and I've recently started doing it, looking for maybe something to make fun of even. But, uh, you know, Alex is just sort of ranting most of the time is not even going on to you know a, a whole lot of substance there's nothing to go after anyway but he did mention this thing and look i i i'm not i wouldn't be surprised to find out that there were like some muslim guys who hated america who uh you know set up a a, a crib in uh mexico somewhere and were like yeah death to the infidel and we're thinking about killing some people like that wouldn't surprise me at all and i don't know what it takes to become like a member of isis right i mean is there a, is there a form that you fill out i mean is there a secret handshake i mean when are you isis right well uh, isis what they seem to be about is setting up a middle eastern caliphate in the levant and they you know so i'd have to say to some extent like yeah, putting up, setting up operations in Mexico is really contrary to what their goals are. Well, but no, I, don't, I don't know about that. If you wanted to come and attack the United States, I mean, the United States is not exactly friendly to their effort to create an Islamic caliphate, right? And so if you wanted to do that, I mean, maybe you'd want to kill some Americans in the process. And by the way, I mean, people are not always doing things with the expectation that they will be spectacularly successful, right? Maybe you just want to kill some Americans because that just sounds like your idea of a good Saturday night. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keen in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,293 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $224. Antiwar.com reports while talking up a new round of humanitarian aid, White House officials said no new military aid would be sent to Iraq at this time, a de facto rejection of Prime Minister Haider Abadi's recent call for more weaponry. The White House is not representing it as a rejection, however, denying that Abadi ever specifically brought up the request for more arms during his White House visit. Abadi's calls for more weapons were repeated and loud during his visit to the U.S., however, and if he did not bring it up, in the closed-door meeting with President Obama, it would only be because he was told beforehand he would not be getting any. The U.S. has struggled to justify its repeated influxes of military aid to Iraq, both because of the Iraqi military tendency to lose billions of dollars worth of advanced U.S. weaponry to the Islamic State, and because Iraq's increasingly checkered humanitarian rights record. The $200 million in humanitarian aid announced will focus on refugees displaced during the ongoing war with the Islamic State and is likely to be less controversial, though since it too will flow through the Iraqi government, expect there to be lots of eyes on the equity of distribution between the Sunni Arab, Shiite, and Kurdish refugees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a group of guerrilla artists who placed a bust of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden atop a column in a New York park only to have police confiscate it are demanding for the sculpture to be returned. The four-foot, 100-pound bust of Snowden was placed atop a column that is part of the prison ship Martyrs Monument in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn on April 6th. The name Snowden was also attached in large typeface at the base of the column. The NYPD removed the statue mere hours later and said they are keeping it as part of the investigation into the incident. The anonymous artists now say they want the sculpture back so they can put it on display through all the proper channels. New York City Parks Advocates President Jeffrey Croft told 1010 WINS in New York that the artists want to apply to have the sculpture put on display through the city's Arts in the Park program. Croft said, Arts in the Park has been a long, long, long held tradition and having the city sees a work like this simply just doesn't make sense. We feel it is sensitive and it sends the wrong message. But it takes months for the application to be approved, so a local gallery in Manhattan has agreed to show the work in the meantime. Croft, along with attorney Ron Kuby, sent a letter to the NYPD asking for the bust to be released. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Boko Haram militants have kidnapped at least 2,000 girls and women since the start of last year, turning them into cooks, sex slaves, and fighters, and sometimes killing those who refuse to comply. A 90-page report from Amnesty International based on dozens of interviews with witnesses and escaped abductees comes a year after the group seized more than 200 schoolgirls from Chibok, a community deep inside an area of northeastern Nigeria the fighters claimed as their caliphate. The kidnapping and a video showing the captured girls dressed in dark hijabs soon afterwards provoked international outrage. But the majority are still missing despite Western pledges to help track them down and a Canadian attempt to broker their release. Boko Haram's leader Abukar Shikeu claims the girls have been married off to his fighters. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
After decades of searching the cosmos, today NASA announced that what it was really looking for was right here on planet Earth all along. For years, we foolishly chased after comets, moons, and stars. Outer space may be beautiful, but it's not as beautiful as the smile of a child, nor as sublime as a good bottle of wine shared among friends. Our search ends where it began, here on this big blue marble. Astronomers say that while their telescopes were pointing at Mars, they never even noticed the planet that was right in front of them. NASA now plans to appreciate what they already have. The agency's latest report, entitled Wonder is Everywhere, Finding the Beauty in the Everyday, calls for further study of the little things that truly give life meaning. Warm rain on a summer day. The smell of pine trees touching the worn paper of your favorite book. That's what's always made us happy. Not some asteroid a million miles away. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. ChristopherCantwell.com. What's going on over there, ChristopherCantwell.com? I haven't put anything up in a few days. The last thing I put out was of some commentary on this uh, shooting of Walter Scott down there in South Carolina. Uh, I I do not like that, that people tried to make this a, a racial issue. It didn't seem to me. I felt like people were saying that, you know, it would have been fine if he shot the guy had only the guy been white or had only the cop been black. This would have somehow resolved it for these people who were very upset about the racial component of it. So I went on a little bit of a, a tangent about the, the, the subject. And the, I have not only written about it, but I started uh, recording, uh, reading my essays out loud and recording them into a podcast, which you can also get on iTunes or Stitcher, the name of it is Christopher Cantwell Essays. And so now my my uh, my essays are now audio rants. There you go. Let's go to Nick calling in from Ohio. Nick, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, hi, guys. Have you guys seen this story about Louisiana outlawing the use of cash for used goods? I have heard of it. I haven't looked at it. Yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, I'm only getting it off of blogs right now, I have to say. I haven't, there's no official news source that I've seen. Yeah, I'd really like from. to see that. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, Lucy Steigerwald wrote about it at the Reason blog, and she links That's to pretty good. 195. Okay. But the, um, it seems there's, it seems that the connection is timed out every time I click it. So I, I can't for sure tell you that this is, that this is happening, but this is outrageous. I mean, if it's actually true. It, it, agreed. 100% agreed. Basically, anything that and it, 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 describe to me as you understand it, sort of how this would this rule would work. Um, so it's mostly targeting flea markets, uh, goodwill, um, I guess eBay transactions, if they can get their hands on it. Um, there's a quote that she includes from State Representative Rick Hardy, who co-authored the bill, and he says, they give a check or a cashier's money order or electronic one of those three mechanisms is used. Uh, it's, it's a mechanism to be used so that the police department has something to go on and have a lead. I don't know. These are kind of vague quotes. Um, In case something's stolen? I've got a, I got a story here from Economic Policy Journal. If, uh, it's a problem. Yeah, that's probably a better source. I mean, it, yeah, the idea, it, it's ostensibly about preventing theft or being able to track stolen items. But we all know that it's just to collect taxes. Oh, I mean, of course. You know, and this is a new yeah. rule or a bill or a law? So it appears to be House Bill 195. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, it's it, it appears to have passed into law. Uh, let, let me follow uh, Rob's source here, actually, because he's basically quoting. So, All right, so this is actually at the Mises Institute, Joseph Salerno writing, uh, uh, with the passage of House Bill 195 into law, the state of Louisiana has banned the use of cash in all transactions involving secondhand goods. State Representative Rick Hardy, co-author of the bill, claims that the bill targets criminals who traffic in stolen goods. According to Hardy, quote, it's a mechanism to be used so the police department has something to go on and have a lead. 
end quote. The bill prohibits cash transactions by secondhand dealers, defined to include garage sales, flea markets, resellers of specialty items, and even nonprofit resellers like Goodwill. Curiously, it specifically uh, exempts pawnbrokers from the ban. That's fascinating. <laughs> that is fascinating. <laughs> I mean, pawn bro- I guess they have a good lobby. <laughs> but of course, pawn shops and not rented at and not rented stalls at the local church flea markets are notorious places that criminals frequent to convert stolen goods into quick cash. So what gives? Are the authors of the bill and those who voted for it ignoramuses, or are they deliberately Uh, obscuring the real purpose of the bill? The answer is clear once we examine the other provisions of the bill. In fact, the bill goes far beyond banning cash transactions. As lawyer Thad Ackle notes, the bill requires, quote, secondhand dealers to turn over a valuable asset, namely their business's proprietary client information. For every transaction, a secondhand dealer must obtain the seller's personal information such as their name, address, driver's license number, and the license plate number of the vehicles in which the goods were delivered. They must also make a detailed description of the items purchased and submit this with the personal identification information of every transaction to the local policing authorities through electronic daily reports. If a seller cannot cannot or refuses to produce the secondhand dealer any of the required forms of identification, the secondhand dealer is prohibited from completing the transaction. Now, this sounds to me, if you've ever been to a pawn shop before, it sounds to me as if they're regulating the entire secondhand goods market like pawn shops, because that seems to be, uh, I have sold things at pawn shops before, and you know, do you have to give them all of this information? Now, you, pay, you can pay in cash, but you have to uh, give them all of this information. Uh, the article continues, So the aim of the bill is not to aid law enforcement in apprehending criminals, none of whom would ever be stupid enough to turn over such information. The real intent is to feed the government's insatiable hunger for tax revenues by completely stripping law-abiding citizens of financial privacy in, in secondhand transactions, every detail of which is fed directly into police files. This troubling development in Louisiana Indiana parallels the intensification of the war on cash by the federal government. Last month, it was reported that the U.S. Justice Department ordered bank employees to snitch to the cops on customers who withdraw more than $5,000. In a speech, Assistant Attorney General Leslie Caldwell exhorted banks to alert law enforcement authorities about the problem so that police can seize the funds or at least initiate an investigation. Well, thank God. I love it when the government does things like this because it just makes Bitcoin that much more likely to take over in the future. Um, you know, when people, you know, if people just go ahead and do business in Bitcoin, the government won't have any idea. Yeah, I mean, it it, it provides you with the capacity to at least evade uh, these laws. It seems to me, though, that they're saying, you know, whatever the, the, the case, like if you want to go and, um, I don't know, buy secondhand goods for Bitcoin or whatnot, uh, you would still uh, be legally obligated to collect all of this information and, of course, submit that information to taxing authorities and whatnot. But, you know, good luck trying to make them do that when it, when it's getting done on the blockchain. Nick? Right. It's funny that you mentioned uh, the war on cash because I was thinking that this was kind of like Louisiana's FATCA. You know, that's what this reminded me of. Um, but the, you know, I'd love to take a look at Louisiana's budget deficit for the last year because I, I tend to find that states that pass laws like this have uh, are a little bit in the red, shall we say. Well, Louisiana is uh, traditionally known as one of the more corrupt states uh, as far as governments go uh, in the union. It's difficult to change that in just you know by just electing a new good governor or whatever yeah and that's a heck of a competition to to win out in yeah. too by the way <laughs> well um you know rhode island's pretty corrupt and i think tennessee came at r- real high on that list too i don't exactly know what the specifics are there um nobody can compete with chicago but uh, that's not a state yet is it true also in louisiana that they're governed uh by french common law and not english common that's law? correct uh, there are some yeah. significant differences there as far as common law goes. and the, the the trial by jury you only need a majority you don't need unanimous can't go that like far that. i don't know okay well, but i know anyway, i know they've got some terrible criminal justice uh, uh you know breaches going on there with all those people in angola prison thanks for the call nick appreciate <laughs> it 855 450 free let's go to dalek and ncap dalek here calling in on skype ncap you're on free talk live Hello. uh thank you i might be uh 
kind of uh, breaking in and out, but uh, sorry about that. Um, so about the Seasteading Institute, uh, I know that Christopher Cantwell... The Seasteading was... Institute is an organization that uh, proposes to have humans live on the water in new, uh, I wouldn't call them boats, but new sort of seafaring houses and buildings and things. Go ahead. Yep, exactly. But um, when I think about it and what uh, Christopher Cantwell says about the argument, and uh, it's a really good argument from one I uh, I heard. I mean, if there is a citizen that uh, another government wants to apprehend or do all these things to this person... And I'm sorry, they, they want to do all these things to this person? Things, it's going to um, base uh, to the to the person that fled down to the society, the society. Okay. <laughs> Um, basically what will happen is that, uh, you know, there's no means to defend themselves. There's pretty much nothing to really trample. But uh, from what I see, um, what I would consider, basically you would have a contractual agreement to basically say that I give reserved to the rights of the, my United States. Dalek, I'm going to have to ask you to stop yada, whatever. Yada, yada. Dalek, then, uh, hold on. Hold the line, please. Uh, you're cutting in yeah. and out, and I can't even understand what you're saying. Thanks. Hold on. 855 free. It's 855-450-3733. It's about seasteading. I know that much, and somebody who's on the run. 855 free. His hair was falling out in clumps. I own Retriever, Sundance. He scratched incessantly. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Olive was suffering like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking 24 hours a day. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. So. Scratching and, and biting. Buddy, my Shih Tzu's itching problem, constantly licking his feet. It keeps me up at night. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days. Tons of energy. No more bad smells. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Sleep at night. Oh, let me do it again. Sleep at night. Get your dog some Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark. And Cantwell. Check out ProXPN. You need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is recording everything you do, and will turn it over to any government that asks, and you never know what it is they're hunting for or why they might be coming after you. Maybe uh, they want to collect taxes. They certainly want to do that. <laughs> Criminals are sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Uh, Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the Internet. ProXPN.com can solve all of that. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android, even Linux, and just get connected to the Internet. That's all you do. You use the app right there, and you're in. They make it very easy for you. You can connect to servers all around the world. One account works for all your devices. You don't have to have separate accounts for each device. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50 to get 50% off of an annual account. It's proxpn.com slash FTL, FTL50. And you can get it for the lifetime of the premium account. Um, and that's really great because it's not just one year's worth or any savings. It's, it's the whole time. So with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. And this is important. ProXPN doesn't keep any records of your online habits. Get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. It's ProXPN.com slash FTL promo code FTL50. Great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go back to Dalek and Cap. Hopefully, we have uh, handled the audio problem um, and we can uh, talk about this issue of seasteading and what might happen. So, lay it on me again. Start from the beginning, Dalek. Okay. So, how do I sound? Just you real sound, quick. Sound good. Okay. Good. Uh, hopefully, it won't break out or anything. But um, first off, uh, I remember that, you know, Chris uh, actually, Brian. Bring out this question: If uh, someone was fleeing down to the sea, yeah, we got to happen. Uh, he's so man, so. I, I th- we're Dalek. having some packet loss issues with you, Dalek. But I'll 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 re- I know what he's talking about. Okay, so Dalek's a, a regular caller into uh, some garbage podcast, my show, which airs Friday from five to seven p.m. Uh, the uh, the the issue that came up is you know, one of the other callers earlier tonight said, you know, how do we get past this? How are we going to solve this problem? What is the problem? And one of the, this problem of the state, the, oh, these yes. uh, okay. these uh, animals who come after us day after day, year after year, for in in perpetuity to enslave the human race into extinction and uh and the way that some people are proposed to uh get away from this insanity is to basically build a giant barge and to go uh, uh build a society at sea on on uh, in international waters where no government authority i like the uh, idea allegedly reaches now the issue that has come up when i address that is that uh, the people uh, who i talk to about this in large part refuse to address 
the issue of defense. And this is something oh, yeah. that throughout the entire libertarian movement has been a, an egregious problem. I've been kicked out of the Free State Project. I got kicked out of Cop Lock. I, I used to get published at Lou Rockwell. Lou Rockwell stopped picking me up. But it's largely because of this issue that I'm willing to talk about the use of violence in society. And uh, most of the people I talk to about seasteading think that this is just some peaceful option that we're just going to go and uh, live on the sea and be happily ever after, as if some government isn't going to come out and try to arrest one of your citizens one day. And the, and the point that I brought up that Dalek is referring to is the moment that one of the people on that boat catches the attention of some foreign government, they're going to come and get him. They're going to come to get one of your people. And you are going to be left with the choice of handing that person over, at which point the point has been completely defeated or you're going to have to fight that government well okay go ahead Dalek. um so i was kind of thinking if you are supposed to then uh basically the person who is allegedly um under that criminal intent basically you would sign something that would say that uh the people that are going within this gate or whatever represents the american faction or whatever foreign faction within that boat and basically they are held in contempt within those uh societies areas and laws um uh and then if there is something wrong you know people can actually go through the un since it is kind of a nation state and or um kind of within their own individuality yeah, I mean, look, you might you might be able to do that, but I mean, uh, what what you'd be fundamentally dealing with is if you have a society uh, at sea and uh, the agents of a foreign government come board your barge and you say, okay, well, you know, agents of this foreign government, welcome welcome to uh, welcome to Ankapistan. You are now bound by the non-aggression principle, and then they're going to go ahead and probably violate the non-aggression principle pretty rapidly once they board that uh, ship. And when they do, and you try to hold them to the standards of that society, and you in prison the agents of the american government then the uh, then you tend to find yourself meeting with new agents of the federal government in greater numbers with greater weaponry and this uh, uh you know it has the potential to to spiral out of control rather rather rapidly um i could yeah no lie i'm not and, uh, I'm not uh, kind of giving out that kind of understanding. I really do actually kind of understand that. But uh, from what I've known, I think there would be a little bit more of uh, uh, well d diplomatic results. Um, they would actually talk about the probably to the UN or to other arbitration organizations that work with maritime. I'm not sure they'd uh, have that ability. The the um, yeah, fundamentally, what you're what you'd be talking about at that point is your barge becoming a nation state. And it's not going to be a nation state well, not anytime soon. Yeah, it, it would be a difficult thing to even get recognition at the, at the United Nations. I mean, how long has Palestine been doing this? And, you know, they have a se semi-functional government and some landmass that they have control over. And they only recently got uh, 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 recognition at the UN. And, of course, that hasn't stopped Israeli rockets from flying into their houses. So, uh, or Palestinian rockets and flying and, uh, you know, flying over the line either. Yeah, it's sort of going, going back and forth that way. And so you are going to... I. I would predict, uh, you know, find yourself uh, in a situation. And of course, when you know rockets start flying into your boat, that doesn't usually work out so well for boats. Well, okay, so um, Dalek, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. The uh, I think that you point out rightly that there uh, there's a much it's much more difficult to defend a boat than it is to defend a piece of land. And the the thing that you would probably have to do with your boat, because boats navigate the globe constantly without problems from uh, the U.S. authorities. I imagine you're talking mostly about people from the United States uh, boarding the boat and wishing to enforce uh, stuff on your citizens, uh, people that happen to be on um, your seastead. You can find out more at seasteading.org. I would say that you would probably just give them up. If the United yeah. States government wants you know somebody who's on your seastead for whatever reason— it's either you or them, uh, you know, ultimately. Yeah. Take a look at what happened Hooray with, freedom. What happened with uh, Afghanistan when, uh, you know, the Bush administration said, hey, give us, uh, give us Osama bin Laden. And uh, Afghanistan said, well, shouldn't you produce some kind of documentation here and say, uh, you know, that what he's done and make some claims and, you know, all these kind of things? And, 
And Bush administration says, it sounds like you don't want to give them up. We're going to have to kill you. And they did. Yeah, and a whole lot of other people, too. And so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're fundamentally dealing with a situation that if you uh, uh, create this uh, this barge and you're trying to set up a society of it, you're, you're still going to be governed by the United States at the end of the day or whichever other foreign is. government. I mean, any government, any government, the, you know, Iraq. You know? I disagree. Um, it depends on how far you are, how close you are to the, the U.S. and proximity and, and these sorts of things. But the U.S. considers itself to be the, the government of the world. And if you believe otherwise, I'd love to hear from you. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free 
Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE or LRN.FM on Skype. That's our username is LRN.FM, and you, uh, you know, connect with us on Skype. You, you have to send a friend request or whatever. We'll probably take care of that in five or ten minutes, and then you can call in. Usually sound a bit better, although the last one wasn't that great. We managed to make it work. And you got to admit that when it does come through, the audio quality is pretty good. Certainly, uh, it certainly does sound better when we don't have a ton of packet loss preventing us from hearing what you're saying. Indeed. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. We've got links there for Amazon and Newegg and uh, Walmart and a variety of different retailers. When you do your shopping there, it's only an extra click. But when you do your shopping there... You manage to help us in so many ways. We get a we get a little vague. You get the same prices, the same service you normally get. We get a little extra, though. So it's shop.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Dale calling in from St. Pete, Florida. Dale, you're on Free Talk Live. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on? All right. So basically, uh, you said right before the break, you were talking about the U.S. being the police officer of the world. Yeah, And largely. I mean, I kind of see where your guys are coming from. But at the same time, we also have China and Russia moving towards a more aggressive stance on doing the policing in the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. And because of that, I don't think we should always pick on the U.S. I mean, look at the issue in Ukraine right now with Crimea. Russia is going in there. And you were talking about the island seastead, and I'm just going to finish up here. With the seastead thing, would you allow criminals from other countries to safe haven there? I mean, I'm just at the website. I'm kind of new to you guys, so okay, so to know a little bit more. I'm not Seastead, the Seastead, and uh, that would what the Seastead would be is essentially a hotel on the water, and that thereby the management of that Seastead would decide who and who could come in and who couldn't come in. And how you would know that somebody's a criminal from another country is really a uh, it's difficult to know. Uh, do con- do countries now allow crim- criminals to uh, to reside there? Well, certain ones do not allow entry. I don't know which ones those may be offhand. All I know is that Canada that- won't allow a convicted felon. But uh, you know, I know that people pass through the U.S. Mexican border on a pretty regular basis without too much trouble. Correct. And well, uh, that's basically it. You know. So, I mean, to 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 my understanding of the the issue at the Seastead, and again, we're not the Seasteading Institute. We just it's a right, topic that comes you up. Were. You guys but about but my 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 thing with it is that uh, you know this is sort of the problem that you have with the Seastead is that just imagine the Free State Project, Mark, with power. Right. Like imagine the free state. Like okay. I got kicked out of the free state project. Right. And this was for a blog post. Uh, now you're talking about a situation. The free state project is just, you know, some website and Facebook page that tries to get people to come here and takes credit for the work of other activists. The uh, the Seasteading Institute would be this uh, group of individuals owns this piece of property and then you're compelled to obey them when you are on it that's the other you know sort of issue that i have with it and that, the rules of that society could sure. literally be limitless there they could be a, a fascist dictatorship for all you know but the pitch is that it would be like a libertarian society and in, and in that instance depending on what type of criminal you are right i mean if you're on the run from some foreign government because you're a you're a you're a narcotics trafficker if uh, ross ulbricht fled to the seastead i imagine he they'd want to welcome him quite warmly uh, the, the problem that arises, of course, is that when government authorities come looking to to kidnap your citizens, you will hand them up, and then that will not be uh, that will not be a free society when you are basically a sitting duck waiting for a government to come snatch you up and throw you in their prisons. All right. Well, we're talking about a non-victim crime. Okay, this is a victimless crime we're talking about. What about, what, for instance, pedophiles, murderers, rapists, people yep. there? If I causing harm. if I were the owner of the seastead, I would throw right, rapists, pedophiles, not. and murderers into the sea quite rapidly. I would not wait. Okay, well, I see where they're coming from. Uh, now you touched on some other issues. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the, of... the the U.S. Uh, being uh, the world's policeman, and I didn't use that terminology. What I said is the world's government, because I really do believe that the uh, the State Department of the United States, uh, you know, uses. Uh, carrots and sticks with governments around the world in order to get policy passed. I just recently came back from Belize, I guess it was about a year ago, and the people that were checking my uh, border, my uh, 
passport were in a little box uh, that was said it was donated by the United States State Department. And I've actually got a video at our Facebook page of that, uh, facebook.freetalklive.com, where you can go and see if that's what you wish. But this just oh, goes yeah. to show how the United States says, hey, you know what? We need better uh, We need better documentation from these little countries down in uh, South Central America, the Caribbean, and that sort of thing. So we're just going to give them all the funds. And, uh, you know, if they don't do it, then they're going to the, – the, their people aren't going to be able to travel over here. And that's just that. And so they use their power um, to basically – uh, whip governments into line um, and so I wouldn't say they were the world's policeman I'd say they're the world's mayor the world's cop uh, the, excuse me the world's uh, governor the world's uh, president is what they're they're m- much more an allusion to but I'm looking here at uh, bostonglobe.com from an article that I saw today it says the world of threats to the US is an illusion and I think that this is absolutely true. The idea that China is going to do anything militarily, uh, you know, be able to rival the United States within the next couple of decades, it's really, mm-hmm. it's just scare tactics to get Republicans ready to pay more taxes to the military war machine. That's I don't, all it's for. Well, I, I don't know that that's true. I mean, let's say uh, uh, if the if the world became quite upset with uh, a particular government that happened to be just running around the world incessantly murdering innocent people and decided, you know, we probably might want to put a stop to that. That's happened before, right? You know, sort of the, the Germans at some point decided, you know, hey, we probably could take over the planet. And so the governments of the world said, hey, probably not a good idea for you to take over the planet. And so they allied with one another to attack, right? And so this was how you got your your World War II. You know, it's not the best history lesson in the world, but bear with me. And and so I don't see anything uh, far fetched about China and Russia and you know some uh, North Korea and Iran uh, all getting together and saying you know this uh, this United States probably not such a great idea. And mind you, we're we're, we're th- th- this is a this government. Is a debtor country. It's it owes these people money, and the reason it's able to fund all this militarism and lunacy is because people are buying up its bonds and buying up its debt and using its dollars. And the moment they stop doing that, this will stop, and it will stop rather abruptly, and it will stop in a in a in a situation that will be uh, uh, bring this economy crashing to a halt. Dale. Uh, well, I I see a lot of your points. But you have to remember, the U.S. is the military complex of the world. We sell more weapons than anything else, basically. Yep. Dealers of death. One other thing we sell is weapons. So, I mean, the yeah. world kind of needs us. You know what I mean? Well, so they need anybody can – a business can – well, the United States doesn't sell weapons. Um, there's – contractors that sell weapons to the people that the United States government lets them sell them to. So if Lockheed Martin uh, wanted to go move to Canada, I imagine the United States government would be like, whoa, we're not going to buy as much stuff from you. And the the U.S. military is uh, 80, you know, like <laughs> they spend more money than the next nine militaries combined. So I do think the United States could fight a war against the rest of the world and still win. Um, I frankly believe that. And, uh, you know, the Soviet Union and, and China, unlikely to do um, doing much You need an economy to fight a war. You can't, that that would... Right. Well, the only economy, the gentleman has pointed out, the U.S., the United States government, really what they've got is, is the export of ideas um, from its citizens, an export of weaponry, and an export of dollars. Uh, because, the, you know, sort of the petrodollar. That's what the U.S. economy is built on. If it lost any one of those three, it's going to blow it up um, severely. But, yeah, the U.S. government has made its uh, bank basically by limiting who can get the weapons and who can't. Correct. Yes, I do agree with you. And there. that means you're picking the winners, right? Like, so they picked, uh, you know, they, they, they picked the, the guy in Yemen that recently got uh, deposed. They're picking the people in Saudi Arabia as the winners. They pick essentially who's going to be in charge of which country, which is, you know, they're the kingmakers. And frankly, in many cases, they are kings that they're doing business with, despots and uh, dictators. I think that's really uh, oh, rel- rather despicable for a country that fought a war against a king 200 years ago to get its independence. This is true. This is true. I cannot agree more. Thanks for the call, Dale. Appreciate it. All right. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Are you, scared? are you scared? Do you think those other governments are going to come get you? 855-450-FREE.
the results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While well, my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. As of today, the average cost of a pack of cigarettes has gone up to two hand jobs and a stick of beef jerky. For more, we go now to Onion News Network prison economics expert Hal Rogan. The prison economy runs on cigarettes. They're involved in every economic transaction at some stage, from mm-hmm. contract killings to naked woman picture acquisition. Right. That's why we've got shampoo at six batteries. We've Whoa. got tattoos at 50 commissary stamps. Now, for what it's really like out there in the market, let's check in with major cigarette trader Big Dap Ramirez. Big Dap, nice to see you again. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. What's happening, Hal? How's it going, Big Dap? Now, it's obviously a boom time for cigarettes right now. I am getting a lot of hand But with jobs. prices this high, analysis shows you're going to be seeing a drop-off in real sales soon as consumers turn to smoking grass fejos. Look, we've been through this before. The market teaches us not to panic. Mm. But if I learn anything in this game, it's that a wife or girlfriend will pass off a few decks in the boneyard. Supply will normalize, and we'll see cigarettes returning to a single hand job or less. Let's hey, big dap. Best of luck to you. We'll keep checking in on the story with Hal throughout the day. Thanks, Rick. Moving on to some happier news. In Atlanta today, two snitches were beaten to death. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855 450 free. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark and Cantwell. 855 450 free. You can sign up for our 
uh, email updates by just going to news.freetalklive.com. We uh, well, give you news on the stations we add and, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, deals with advertisers and contests and a variety of different things. It's a great little way to stay in touch with the program. It's news.freetalklive.com. Can't, well, apparently you were not pleased with uh, my answers regarding, uh, I guess, the situation with this fictitious situation. We're talking about the a seastead, and you find out more about seasteading at seasteading.org. A seastead being, say, raided by the U.S. government because they've got uh, some, uh, you know, somebody who's wanted there. So, I mean, what I've been sort of going through for some period of time, we had a caller asked earlier, how do we actually solve this problem of this state run amok, taxing us, enslaving us, uh, killing people around the world? All of these terrible things that we talk about on Free Talk Live every single day, the things that I write about and talk about on my website and my show. Uh, and it seems to me that most people actually don't have any intention of solving that problem. And and this is where actually the, the fundamental disagreement that I have with so many people goes. We had... Uh, um, we had we had talked on here. Stephen Mullen, you said he wouldn't push the button to abolish the state. You you agree with him on that? That you would not push the button to abolish the state. And I'm saying to myself when I hear that, I'm like, the whole point is to abolish the state. The whole point <laughs> is to get these people to stop interfering in our lives. And there are there are people in this world who talk about it who would not literally would not lift a finger to accomplish the very goal that we spend all of our time talking about. And the sea setting. Seems to be just a continuation of that, that like we're going to make this really fancy idea that that it's really, you know, sort of romantic. But since we actually are never going to do it, since we are fundamentally never going to accomplish our goals, that there is no need for us to answer these really important questions like, well, if we're going to get away from government, then what do we do when they come to kidnap our citizens? Well, the answer is... Well, the answer is hand them over. We'll just well, hand them over, and then it completely defeats the purpose, and you're not getting away from a government. You're not avoiding uh, the, the, any tax codes. You're not avoiding any laws. You're just you're just another peasant. Indeed. So I get where you're coming from, but you're never going to defeat the U.S. government on the sea in warfare. I mean, you're talking about an organization— So then where do we defeat them? You do not defeat them. You cannot, you know, what you're asking, uh, this, it's like you're asking your my son uh, to be able to fight uh, Mike Tyson. Um, you, you simply can't do it. And that's, you know, that's the end of it. The only thing you can do against the federal government is to hide the u.s federal government is to hide um stay away stay as far away from their clutches as you can you know the kinds of things you do with a big dangerous individual is the kind of things you're going to do with that with that organization so that I, answer is completely unacceptable to me and i wouldn't try to put your son in a boxing ring with a professional fighter but what i would say is well son this is her this is where uh, daddy keeps the guns and uh if mike tyson decides to come in here and punch you in the face you blow his brains out the other side of his head yes. okay and that's how your son beats mike tyson there's an answer to that question and if people won't if people are just going to be resigned to perpetual slavery until the extinction of the human race then i'm afraid that said extinction might come about a little sooner than anybody's planning on i think we're waiting for force fields actually um at this point the, the shield and sword technologies throughout uh, history have uh, they've always sort of kept pace well shields aren't really keeping pace with uh, sword technology uh today so the swords are a lot bigger a lot sharper than the shields and hopefully we'll see something where you have uh, force fields and at that point once you have force fields there's not much the government can do science fiction mm -hmm. is not an answer to the problem of hundreds of millions of people filing extortion forms with the most tyrannical the most powerful government in the history of mankind we had the other caller call in uh, uh, was was talking about well the, the, the america's the world police what about these other governments yeah you might want to think about those other governments Governments, ladies and gentlemen, because right now everybody's living real comfortable. We're like, hey, we're the kings of the world. We've got the world reserve currency and all the guns, and nobody can mess with us until they do. There's the. It's true. We're not safe. This is not okay. This is a problem that really needs to get solved. You can have a, a, a 
atomic war break out before the end of this program tonight? Well, the nuclear um, the nuclear threat has diminished over time. It certainly hasn't gone away, but um, you know it's gone down. I think that what we're trading at this point is stability. Uh, people would rather have peace than freedom is what we've seen throughout human history. People want peace as opposed to freedom. And if we what freedom needs to provide, what the liberty community needs to provide is a peaceful transition to freedom. There is no such thing as trading peace for freedom. If you, you are can't. not free, then you do not have peace. But when can... men are threatening to imprison and murder you, that is not a state of peace. You can trade. Uh, you can trade freedom for stability, though. And whether you, we, you think that we have stability? Yeah, we have a reasonable stability in the United States. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, the crime rate's pretty low here in New Hampshire. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I generally know what rates the government's going to extort me at. Uh, this is, you know, as far as an economy goes, the, one of the better ones to make money in, if that's what one wishes to do. And so, yeah, I'd say we have stability. If not, uh, I mean, there's certainly communities that don't have it. Well, you might be able to say that your your life is a little bit more the same from day to day here in New Hampshire than it is in a, in a lot of other places. I'll give you that, but I don't know that that if you know, I don't know if that's a good definition of stability. There's absolute calamity going on in the world. There's a, the, the United States government. I don't even know how many governments they're fighting anymore. I don't even know how many how many countries this this monster, this leviathan, is at war with anymore because they just have so many new words for war now. They're like, I don't know, we're not going to war. We're just going to it's a warship so there kill a bunch of people and that doesn't really count we don't actually need congressional approval for that uh you know what we're dealing with the economic uh situation that we're dealing with right now is absolutely the result of the the, the massive credit expansion that's been going on and eventually they're going to pop that bubble and what's the next round of uh crazy bailout lunatic situations that they do to deal with the the uh the outcome of having these near zero interest rates for for how many years this is a a crisis waiting to happen, and you know, I, I, don't count on stability for long, Mark. Well, I, I I don't know what's going to happen, but with the the bears, like you and I, when it comes to the U.S. economy, we bears have been predicting the downfall of the U.S. economy for some time, basically since the Brenton Wood Accords. Um, it's like, this can't stand, and I don't think it can stand, but I don't know how long it can stand for, because I didn't think it was really going to come out of the 2007-2008 uh, recession thing. I thought that it, but somehow now we we are definitely seeing a better economy than we saw in the past. What you know whether that if, if you if you don't have a job, there's still a lot of jobless Americans, uh, especially in the upper dem, older demographics um, and male demographics. Then you know it doesn't feel like it's a better economy, but generally it is a better economy. It doesn't feel like a better econo economy to me. Certainly, I don't think it felt like a better economy to people who are uh, 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 facing uh, police uh, uh, batons and 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 pe pepper spray at uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a better economy for for a great deal of people. And of course, like I said, uh, what, what we're dealing with the, the the stability that you have right now. I don't know how you consider this a better economy. It's it's a fundamentally unsound. It's a terrible thing that's going on. I mean, we've had zero near near zero percent interest rates for for some period of time, yep. right? And that causes this uh, you know this boom cycle, right? And they're trying everything they can to keep the boom coming, but then eventually comes the bust, right? And this uh, this boom that they're trying to create right now it strongly resembles a recession and the boom is a borderline recession so when that bubble pops that's a you're you're dealing with a pretty sad situation. They're not going to be able to lower interest rates anymore. Do you think it's going to come from the uh, education sector? That seems to be where the, we've seen the most uh, inflation as far as pricing goes. Um, the the costs of attending college. I've seen uh, numbers that estimate them going up ten times in the last uh, fifteen years or something like that. And uh, you know that's not sustainable. You're gonna you have a bunch of Americans wandering around with an incredible amount of debt coming out of college. Oh yeah, and now they're gonna make it free. And if you think it's expensive now, wait until it's free. It's a it's a it's a it's a crisis waiting to happen. But there's any any number of things. What happens when when they lower interest rates? I think you'll see it in capital goods. Okay, so when you lower interest rates, uh, it it sends a signal to the marketplace that there's capital savings, right? And when there are capital savings and uh, uh, businessmen take out loans uh, and they invest that in capital goods. 
and they do this to expand their businesses. And when they do that, they realize that there is not actually the savings uh, uh, to uh, buy up the goods that they have now produced. And all of a sudden, uh, they have to lower prices because people aren't buying what happens. And then this is what basically what happened in 2008. 855 450 free. It's 855 450 3733 or lrn.fm on Skype. 855 450 free. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,293 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $224. Antiwar.com reports while talking up a new round of humanitarian aid, White House officials said no new military aid would be sent to Iraq at this time, a de facto rejection of Prime Minister Haider Abadi's recent call for more weaponry. The White House is not representing it as a rejection, however, denying that Abadi ever specifically brought up the request for more arms during his White House visit. Abadi's calls for more weapons were repeated and loud during his visit to the U.S., however, and if he did not bring it up in the closed-door meeting with President Obama, it would only be because he was told beforehand he would not be getting any. The U.S. has struggled to justify its repeated influxes of military aid to Iraq, both because of the Iraqi military tendency to lose billions of dollars worth of advanced U.S. weaponry to the Islamic State, and because Iraq's increasingly checkered humanitarian rights record. The $200 million in humanitarian aid announced will focus on refugees displaced during the ongoing war with the Islamic State and is likely to be less controversial, though since it too will flow through the Iraqi government, expect there to be lots of eyes on the equity of distribution between the Sunni Arab, Shiite, and Kurdish refugees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a group of guerrilla artists who placed a bust of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden atop a column in a New York park only to have police confiscate it are demanding for the sculpture to be returned. The four-foot, 100-pound bust of Snowden was placed atop a column that is part of the prison ship Martyrs Monument in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn on April 6th. The name Snowden was also attached in large typeface at the base of the column. The NYPD removed the statue mere hours later and said they are keeping it as part of the investigation into the incident. The anonymous artists now say they want the sculpture back so they can put it on display through all the proper channels. New York City Parks Advocates President Jeffrey Croft told 1010 WINS in New York that the artists want to apply to have the sculpture put on display through the city's Arts in the Park program. Croft said, Arts in the Park has been a long, long, long held tradition and having the city seize a work like this simply just doesn't make sense. We feel it is sensitive and it sends the wrong message. But it takes months for the application to be approved, so a local gallery in Manhattan has agreed to show the work in the meantime. Croft, along with attorney Ron Kuby, sent a letter to the NYPD asking for the bust to be released. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Boko Haram militants have kidnapped at least 2,000 girls and women since the start of last year, turning them into cooks, sex slaves, and fighters, and sometimes killing those who refuse to comply. A 90-page report from Amnesty International based on dozens of interviews with witnesses and escaped abductees comes a year after the group seized more than 200 schoolgirls from Chibok, a community deep inside an area of northeastern Nigeria the fighters claimed as their caliphate. The kidnapping and a video showing the captured girls dressed in dark hijabs soon afterwards provoked international outrage. But the majority are still missing despite Western pledges to help track them down and a Canadian attempt to broker their release. Boko Haram's leader Abukar Shikeu claims the girls have been married off to his fighters. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The victims of a devastating tornado expressed gratitude that The Onion's three-part series on the disaster was reported with fairness, accuracy, and an unusual degree of sensitivity. Survivors said they were at least thankful for one thing, that The Onion put much more care and insight into their reporting of the tragedy than any competing newspaper, by far. In economic news, a Pulitzer Prize would very much help certain newspapers increase their circulation, resulting in greater ad sales and more revenue to pay their tireless, hardworking reporters, all of whom have families at home to care for. In other headlines, a group known as Americans for Fairness in awarding journalism prizes is asking all Americans to help The Onion receive a Pulitzer Prize. An anonymous man says he will murder 50 innocent people if The Onion is not awarded a Pulitzer. And look at it, it's beautiful. Look, just give us a Pulitzer already, okay? This is humiliating. For more prize-worthy stories and videos, go to theonion.com slash review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-3733. Or you can use uh, Skype. LRN.FM is our username. Just uh, call up on Skype. You'll sound a bit better. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. So something happened on my news feed uh, for Facebook. This has to have happened to other people, and I hope that they can understand. I uh, saw a story. Now, this story wasn't particularly new, but it was new to me. Like, I hadn't seen it. And, um, you know, there was a discussion going on. And the story is from 11alive.com. The Western Black Rhino officially declared extinct. And this was from November the 6th, 2013. So certainly not fresh news hot off the presses. But, you know, maybe you're like me and you didn't realize that there was a subspecies of the black rhino called the Western Black Rhino. And that that subspecies was now uh, extinct. 
Well, I got into a bit of a kerfuffle um, on the internet commenting on this in a couple of places. I, I felt like this was a great opportunity because you don't see this too often. This is what you call charismatic megafauna. Right? Megafauna? Megafauna. So fauna, it's an animal. Yeah, Mega yeah. means it's big. Okay. And charismatic means people like to look at it. Okay, because yeah, I don't, I don't know rhinoceroses to be particularly like good with chicks or anything. Like they don't go into the bar and like steal your girlfriend. It's pretty clear. Uh, pretty clear. You have not hung out with Western black rhinos. The um, the fact Racist. is, <laughs> the fact is, is that uh, these, you know, like tigers, whales. Uh, you know, nobody's out there protesting to save the plankton, right? right. I mean, supposedly a hundred species go extinct a year or something like that is what we're told. I have no clue. And I don't know what the rate of um, animals were going extinct before. And, you know, exactly, you know, what defines a species can get a little shifty. Yeah, I love how people are, you know, throwing around these numbers like they've kept exact uh, uh, tally on every animal on the planet. And they're like, oh, there goes the last one, as if yeah. they have any clue what they're talking about. They may or may not uh, be right. Uh, I mean, you know, rhinoceroses aren't exactly the easiest things to hide. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's not like you're talking about a, a specific uh, ver- a specific variety of tick or something yeah. like that. You, that wouldn't, may- you wouldn't want to be smuggled a rhino into a prison. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened somewhere. So uh, the the point that I made on this is that this animal has died because of big government. And I'm no, the, Mark, uh, big government is what's going to save the Western black rhinoceros. That's well, it didn't. <laughs> you know, there's laws. that's because the taxes weren't high enough. <laughs> there are laws against uh, the trading in rhino uh, horns. Now, I haven't been able to figure out whether it is illegal to own a Western black rhino, but I'm going to go ahead and s- make an assumption that yes, it is. Pretty sure they got an ordinance against it in Keene. <laughs> 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 I don't think that would fly at all if I just like walking my rhinoceros down Main Street, probably getting a whole heap of trouble with the KPD <laughs> if I did that. I, uh, I I know they, I'm sure they have it in, in, in NYC. Uh, I mean, they've got to have an ordinance uh, covering it there. Anyway, um, and my my rebuttal is is that essentially the the animal has been killed by big government, and the reason is is because people can't own them. You don't see an extinction of cows. Um, you know, it's because they're a val- they are and have been for a long time a valuable animal. You can make leather out of them. You can make hamburgers out of them. You can make steaks out of them, dog food, and uh, you know a variety of things. There's not a piece of the uh, green uh, uh, what uh, that pink slime they use at McDonald's. There is not a piece of a cow that goes to waste. I imagine they even use the hair for something. I could be wrong, uh, but. You know, when when you sometimes they'll they'll leave the hair on some leather. Sometimes you'll see cows, uh, you know, maybe even cowboy boots or something with cow, cattle hair on them. So they do use the hair um, to some extent. So cows are a very valuable commodity because people have figured out how to use them. Why not turn over some of these amazingly, you know, these animals that are on a brink of extinction and let people own them? If you would have said, "Hey, um, it looks like there's only nine black rhinos left," and uh, you know, somebody can go in and take them like the poachers took them right the poachers did something with them if some farmers were able to get them and own them legally maybe you could even have an auction uh, the government could even have an auction for them and, and give a piece of land where you can keep your rhinos and then they could, and people could farm them, make rhino burgers. Uh, I know people want to buy rhino horns, um, you know, make ashtrays out of their feet, whatever it is that you do. The farmer is going to be incentivized not to kill all his uh, rhinos off, but to grow more rhinos. Yeah, I mean, the, the notion of a, a rhino foot ashtray makes me want to start smoking again. But the, <laughs> so, yeah, I, and the other thing uh, is uh, just the, the issue of having these unowned resources or these government owned resources in actuality. These things that uh, are, are deemed as public spaces where people are invited to uh, rush out eagerly with a rifle and start killing things, right? When That's you- ultimately what you're doing. I mean, you, you're basically making a government make-work program where these uh, wardens go out and try to stop people in huge, vast areas from uh, from taking these animals. But the only time they seem to do anything is when there's a news crew along. 
Yeah, and so what you have is this situation where somebody's going out into a resource that is not his, and he is plundering resources from that land, right? He's plundering yeah. resources with with all the uh, the glee and joy of, of a burglar inside of a house, ransacking things and destroying it because the land is not his. He has no in- uh, incentive by which to preserve the resources of that place, whereas we don't tend to behave this way in our own homes and our own yards. I mean, even if you own some uh, some uh, some land uh, in uh, in New Hampshire or something, you own some uh, forest land or something to that effect, you'd be terribly unlikely to kill every living thing on it because there's probably uh, some stuff that you want there, right? You would uh, uh, temper yourself by which uh, you would uh, go out and destroy resources. I've got an apple tree um, on my property. Actually, I have quite a few. I've planted some recently, but I had an apple tree when I bought it. I didn't I cut down all the trees around it in order to, you know, put in my apple grove and and that sort of thing. Um, but I left that apple tree because it's going to produce things that I can use. Uh, old sour apples that I then give to my pigs, and if I don't get them all, then the deer come. It's terrible. But um, you know, it's not like I cut it down and used all the resources of the apple wood to uh, heat my stove or anything like that because I had a resource. No, you manage the best people at managing resources are the people that own the resources. And now, whatever countries that were in Western Africa that had black rhinos running around in them, no longer have them and can no longer get the tourism from them because governments are the most inefficient organizations. On It's the most inefficient way to organize your group on the planet, and it's because you get terrible signals from the marketplace. Uh, the signal is is that everybody in uh, that your Western African country has to pay you taxes, or you can come in and you know kill them and take their stuff. So you know customer service doesn't seem to, isn't too high on your list. Yeah, you're you're creating a, a situation where people are disincentivized from doing anything positive. I mean, we had a guy on this show, Nazi Lang, who was you know arrested for raising money for a charity, and it's just like another normal thing that happened. And it, it, it sets up all the systems of incentives in order to uh, discourage positive behavior and encourage negative behavior uh, to the to the species thing. I mean, you know. Uh, 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 the seas, people are concerned about overfishing. Why? Well, because when people are uh, concerned about overfishing, uh, they don't. You, you can't have property on the water uh, at, at present. Uh, even governments don't uh, uh, tend to think of uh, water as uh, uh, property. There's no ownership there. If you try they to, do. if you <laughs> try to set up, uh, you know, uh, a a homestead a piece of the ocean i imagine that you'd run into some trouble with the coast guard or a similar institution you know and our sea setting friends you can homestead uh fishing rights um a, a person can homestead fishing rights and now they're basically bought and sold between fishermen and governments claim for themselves uh dominion over areas of ocean for basically drilling purposes um that sort of thing i think there's five countries that claim the arctic which is now opening up for drilling and these things are licensed by governments so you have a fishing license and then people get concerned about overfishing and so the government says okay well you're only allowed to fish during this period of the year and then you have to stop so that the fish can reproduce and whatnot so what does a fisherman do well he goes out into the ocean and he extracts as many fish from the ocean as he possibly can during this limited period of time by which he has to collect his fish and then you know what all those fish that count up in his nets they don't reproduce and that's going to create a situation that's not going to have more fish in the ocean and like 98 98- percent of the ocean is completely unoccupied by fish um, is my understanding of the the numbers why do they just have more fish farms out there um, and yeah I think that uh, homesteading um, water steading would be uh, something that people could do your thoughts 855-450-3733 it's 855-450 free lrn.fm is our username on Skype I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? 
It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. It's 855-450-3733. And you can call in and bring up whatever you want to talk about here on uh, this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. We use battery power on so many things these days, it's hard to keep track. Well, there's a new device that'll help you keep your battery-powered devices up and running. It's a source of backup power so small you can slide it right in the pocket, in your pocket, or in the glove box of your car. But it's powerful enough that in some circumstances it can jumpstart a car. Sounds crazy, but it's not. I'm talking about the breakthrough and portable power technology called the Pocket Power Plus. Ian's got one, and I I believe actually he's uh, gifted it uh, to to you, Cantwell. Wants you to try it out. He knows you're quite the techie guy. Um, It's uh, actually sitting in that case right there. It comes with a really great case and lots of plugs and these sorts of things. And uh, I we we want you to to give it a try and see what you think about it. I'm I'm interested to check it out. So I have uh, I have a few of these devices that are basically USB power packs, right? Yeah. And and they're they're five volts. It's not going to jumpstart your car, but some of them are upwards of fifty thousand milliamp hours, and they're 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 serious devices that I'll use uh, when I go to Concord so I can record all day that sort of thing. Uh, the Pocket Power Plus, to my understanding, is like a, a nineteen or twenty volt battery. 
Uh, and that's that's an interesting thing because it provides you with a lot of different options. And it has all kinds of different plugs. So it's not just a situation where you plug in your uh, device that uses a micro USB like your cell phone. You can power a laptop or um, you know a variety of things. It's got all kinds of plugs, including little jumper cables. Yeah, the closest thing I have to that is I have the um, I have like the power uh, the, the jump starter pack for the car. Right, yeah, mine is very large. Yeah. It's very heavy. It's not something that I would throw in a backpack and carry around with me while I'm doing things, right? But the Pocket Power Plus uh, has very similar potential, it sounds like, so I'm looking forward to playing with it. Yeah, there's times when a battery is just dead, uh, you know, and, like, no amount of jumping or charging or whatever is going to make that make a difference, and obviously, you know, it's not going to make a difference there. But, um, and that's why I want to say that it's, uh, you know, in some circumstances, it's not it's not a fix-all, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, but it, it, it there's nothing quite like it, so check it out. It's pocketpowerplus9.com. You can get it for half price there, pocketpowerplus9.com, and that's for my listeners uh, here on Free Talk Live. And if you use coupon code FTL when you check out, you save even more. Pocketpowerplus9.com. Use the coupon code FTL when you check out. So we're talking about this situation where in Western Africa, the black rhino has uh, been declared officially extinct. And the kind of people that tend to worry about this sort of thing, because I mean, there's a, there's a, Plenty of people wouldn't know this. I didn't even know that this uh, that there's a subspecies of uh, a rhinoceros uh, called the um, Western Black Rhino. Um, and uh, so I wasn't aware. But there's plenty of people that just don't pay attention to how many uh, animals are going extinct or whatever. But the kind of people that do pay attention tend to want big government solutions. Yeah, they think that it's uh, the, that people are the problem that's causing all of these rhinos to go extinct now to the extent that governments are made up of people i and suppose poachers. that this is accurate well poachers too I well mean, but uh, no no that's that's fundamentally inaccurate the reason that there are poachers is because of governments right governments create poachers the same way they create uh you know drug smugglers right without well, i suppose that a poacher could be somebody who's poaching off of private land too so the government doesn't create poachers in that fashion but they do create poachers off of public land if there was a particular word for that right uh I tend, generally we tend to think of poachers as people who go onto public land and take uh generally uh, things re resources and animals that are not uh, permitted by the state uh to be taken uh, when p people trespass on land and take uh private uh, privately owned animals we we call them uh cattle uh, rustlers and cattle rustlers or you know horse thieves yeah, or trespassers or Corpses, right? Yeah, corpses. That's probably what you call them in many cases. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we don't, uh, you know. Anyway, in any case, government is of course creating this problem, and as is often the case with governments, they create a problem, and then they're like, well. I guess that we're going to be the solution yes, to this problem. That's of what course. they do. And so this is how you get all of these lunatic theories about, uh, 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 well, we're going to we're going to tax the weather now, and we're going to do all of these different things because we believe that the X, Y, and Z is responsible for the extinction of you know the thousand species that went away this year, or whatever lunatic number these people are coming up with. And this led me down a very very frightening rabbit hole the other day, Mark. That there are people who uh, I, I I took some time to to uh, listen to a couple of audio books. Uh, one by uh, Walter Block, uh, um, um, defending the undefendable. Yep. And I and the man's I, a genius, and it's a great book. It is a, he is a genius, and it is a great book. And I and I recommend everybody check it out. It gives I, you like I, economic explanations for so many like demonized professions and why they're important and why they exist. Uh, and I and I listened to a reading of Murray Rothbard's For a New Liberty. Now, throughout both of these books, they were talking about the anti-populationists. So these are apparently some folks who were like a, a pretty major concern back in the 70s. And I don't hear people talking about overpopulation a great deal they today. They call this show. But... Uh, you do. It does come up. Somebody called into uh, the the Stephen Molyneux show and said and he asked them if they were thinking about having kids, and they're saying, "Well, I don't think the world needs any more people." And I went to go and like look into like, well, what are the who are these overpopulation people? What does the overpopulation movement look like? Is there a lot of people involved in this? And I, and I found. Uh, so there's like the center, the Center for Biological Diversity is one of these institutions, and I, when I go to a website, I try to see how popular it is, and I check like the Alexa rank, and they're in the top 100,000 websites in the world. The Center for Bi uh, uh, Biological Diversity. Not, not, no slouches, right? These people 
are complaining about species extinction, and they are saying that the reason there are you know all these other animals are dying off is because you know human beings uh, not such a great thing for the planet. Ta well, they're taking up too much space would be the claim. Is is and certainly if you have. Uh you know, you have an overpopulation, uh, you know, in, of one type of species in an area. It can drive out other types of species. I can think of a really good example um, from my life is is the, I grew up in Florida, and we had a particular type of anole. These are the little lizards you see running around when you go to Florida. Um, so the anole, there's the Florida anole. This is my understanding. There might be more scientific names that I'm not familiar with. There's the Florida anole, and then there's the Cuban anole. Now, the Cuban anole tends to be more brown and have more of a round head. The Florida anole is greener and has a flat head. And I had noticed that there you know, were fewer of them and fewer of them over time. Basically, I would say that the Florida anole is somewhere near extinction at this point and that the Cuban anole has nearly taken over the, the space. Um, and because I would assume it is somehow a better breeder, a better eater, a, you know, in some way or another, it is nudging out the Florida anole. So sure, that can happen. Um, a species can uh, get so large that it uh, drives out other stuff. Yeah, there was uh, another situation. Some of you have probably seen this video of people uh, driving a boat down this river and there are fish just flying out of the water all over the place because some uh, some species of, I believe, carp got introduced to this this river that just uh, totally outcompeted all the other fish in the area. Now it's getting to a point where there's th there's so many fish in the water that you can scarcely put your hand in the water and not hit five of them. Hmm. Uh, and I can't imagine that's very sustainable. I don't imagine that it is very sustainable at all. And, you know, in, in that situation you can imagine that okay well the fish sort of take over this uh this uh, particular river and then those fish out compete all the other animals and then they're left with just each other and i think that that species of fish will probably die and then something else will come along right um it's the circle of life no doubt i want to talk about it a little bit more um and you can call in and talk about it too it's uh, the number is 855 450 free that's one eight five five four five zero three seven three three. It's toll free, or you can call us on Skype. The username is LRN.FM eight fifty five four fifty free. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877-345. 345-7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1-877-345-7645. That's 1-877-345-7645. 1-877-345-7645. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on Free Talk Live. Got a couple of segments left. There is time for your call. It's 855-450-FREE. If for whatever reason you want to see our ugly mugs, you may go to cam.freetalklive.com. We have a chat room there that's uh, on that side of the page, and you can uh, see us do the show. Um, you know, there it is. A couple of cameras in the studio, and we, we do our best. We, we've got actually camera shots and angles and stuff. You know, and you can catch up on all the, like, subtle insults that we throw at each other, like saying ugly mug and then pointing the camera at me. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that uh, the, the camera has been, the, the, the close-up camera has been on me for uh, two and a half hours and not on you at all. So, um, you know, if I had a hot gal, I would turn it towards her, but I don't have that. Yeah, I'd so. put it under the table probably in that case. <laughs> I would call that an appropriate <laughs> 855 450 free can't while you were talking about um you sort of your misadventures on the internet looking into this uh, the people who believe that the world is being overpopulated yeah i'm one of these people who really likes having things to complain about on the radio so i decided to go down this little rabbit hole of looking into uh these overpopulation people who are very concerned that because of human beings that there's a you know, you know all of this uh, species extinction and you know, I think we're taught this in uh, basically people are taught this in school, uh, you know, from the start. So they were doing things like handing out condoms with uh, like uh, endangered species on them and saying, like, don't go bear. Panthers are rare and, and little slogans like this. And, I'm for that. And handing them out to free people. condoms. I'm there. Well, I look, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with free condoms, but I have a huge problem with the systemic discouragement of human breeding right i, well, I have a pro I, I i think that you know you should propose yeah get out there and uh, systemically uh, you know get out there and propose that people not breed i think that's a fine thing to do well but when so i mentioned that i had uh, sort of stumbled upon this subject as a result of listening to audiobooks by rothbard and block from the 70s and you know, you look back, and when they were really concerned, I, I know that we have a caller. We'll get okay, to I, I just didn't know if you saw my finger, yeah. uh, my signal. Go ahead. We'll get to you. <laughs> um, but the, so he uh, is there concerned about this in the 70s, and I think the, the population re growth rate was something like 6% at the time, and then uh, now it's down to just over 2%. Right. In the U.S. or worldwide? Worldwide. Okay. Okay. And there are there are people who want to get this down to a negative number. Yeah. Right. They they wanted to. They're say they're telling people stop at two is one of the slogans that they're throwing around. So you know just replace yourselves or stop altogether. Well, you know if you are going to create a situation where people are being discouraged from breeding and encouraged to murder one another, it's that scares the life out of me. That sounds like you want to bring about the extinction of the human race. 
What are you Actually, talking about the murdering part? I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know. Governments have all this war propaganda okay, on the great. television. Okay. You know. I just want to make sure that I was clear on what we were talking about. So, yeah, as people move into the cities, they tend to uh, have fewer children because children on a farm uh, are free labor. Children in the city are liabilities. So um, that's what tends to happen is, is that the world's going through the thing that the United States went through in the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century where essentially the amount of farms are just plummeting and because farming farming techniques are getting better and better and people are just moving into the city for jobs and that sort of thing and so they're having fewer kids well and there's also all sorts of uh, disincentives to you know having a farm and that sort of thing and i think that that's part of it too is it, it seems to me that there are a group of people who uh, don't think that the that the human race is such a good idea. <laughs> and these people yes. want to be in control of public policy and do seem to be in control of public policy. And people who don't think that humanity is a good thing, being in control of the most powerful government in the history of mankind, I don't know, it frightens me a little bit. This let's, guy guess all I'm saying. Let's go talk to Eddie calling in from Texas. Eddie, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to call about <clears> – <throat> there's been a few stories about – uh, this rhino that's supposedly extinct. Yeah, that we, we're talking about that story right now, and it's the story is actually from like 2013, uh, and it's the western black rhino, which isn't actually a species, but more like a subspecies. Right. That, that's what I wanted to say. Is it's just it's more of a subspecies, but you know, a lot of people don't really understand. You know, I mean, if we privatized wildlife, I've got a little. Uh, organization called the Benevolent Order of Agorist Hunters. And what I promote, I mean, yes, we have to follow regulation, you know, as far as, you know, uh, paying taxes, you know, that kind of issue. But, but um, you know, I really believe that, that you know, if, if some, uh, I don't know, bill, eccentric billionaire uh, w was able to actually own a panda bear, um, there would be more panda bears. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I agree 100 percent. I actually just advocated for that just a moment ago, um, Eddie. I don't I, did, I don't know if you got a chance to hear it, but we uh, I, I think that that is the only solution for these problems is, is that for the private market to take place and for these rhinoceros, rhinoceri or whatever they are, pandas to be grown for tourism for uh, meat, for fur, for their horns, for whatever things that people want to get out of them and can can get out of them. Um, you know, some weird voodoo magic they get from tiger penises. I don't know what it is that they're going to claim. It doesn't really matter to me because the animals will be saved. Yeah, I think that well, you do right. have I mean, some some pandas that are being kept in captivity, but I think that they're at like public zoos, right? Yeah, sure. And now the pandas, the, the problem that they're facing with that, to my understanding, is that they won't breed in captivity. <laughs> and rather than be like, okay, maybe let's uh, let the market figure out some better way of encouraging pandas to, to knock boots, they're going to keep them in cages and be like, come on, have sex. <laughs> they play Barry White for them. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, sometimes some of these species are more valuable uh, dead. Um, yeah, sure. You know, in, in Africa, in Africa, the lions, the lion, you know, lion hunting bring hunting brings a lot of money to the communities in in, in Africa. Now, if you, they weren't allowed to hunt those lions, those lions would lose their value. And they would all be killed. Uh, but, you know, just in Tanzania alone, since 1990, I think it's been over 600 people have been killed by lions. So there's no major love other than the fact that they're able to hunt. That 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 the you know the rich fat Americans. And Europeans are able to come there and hunt them. That's the only love uh, of the lion uh, that, that a lot of these people have because it brings them food. It brings money to their economy. Uh, yeah. but, but the only other way that they see it is as being an animal that's, uh, that's a nuisance, much like how we see all these wild pigs in the South. Yeah, the one thing that uh, you don't get to see from Disney movies is, is that uh, you know the vast majority of male lions really don't get the opportunity to breed. So you got one guy, the chief big lion, who's managed to make it as long as he has by killing um, other younger male lions, and he'll actually kill the cubs of those males too. 
Uh, actually, yeah, he'll kill the cubs if he can uh, get a hold of the cubs of another male uh, lion, obviously, um, not the females. And he, the rest of them just run around. So you're like 9 out of 10. I'm just making a, taking a guess here. It could be 1 out of 20 um, that actually gets to breed. So 9 out of 10 don't. So they need to be hunted. Otherwise, they're going to... You know, they're going to get into destroy people's livestock. They're going to hurt people. They're going to, uh, you know, they're going to mess with, with the you're, lion you're, pride. You're, they're going to kill cubs. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, a lot of people were, um, you know, they were upset about uh, Corey Noland. He won He won an auction to hunt the black rhino, uh, black rhino uh, uh, there. And he, um, you know, people were complaining, saying, oh, well, he's going to kill this black rhino. Well, it's not like you just go out and, out there and kill any black rhino. The African government takes you out there and shows you an older dominant male that's no longer breeding and stomping on little baby rhinos. And they say, that's the one you got to kill because that one's no longer breeding and it's a detriment to the herd. Yeah. Sounds awful sportsmanlike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harry, we're the African government. Let us let us uh, show you the rhino that you will be executing this afternoon. Now go ahead, pay us a whole boatload of money so that we can kill people. Yeah, this is going to be great. So, uh, but yeah, I imagine that uh, if people are willing to pay a whole boatload of money to go cap a rhino in the face, then uh, you know somebody would be willing to uh, to breed some rhinos. And now uh, there's no more of them. Right, and have their own little lion country safari. Eddie, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Nice to hear from you Thank again. You. 855 450 free. It's 855 450 3733. What do you think? Nobody likes the idea of hunting these big, beautiful animals, but it can be really good for the population. It can be really good for the governments um, as far as you know the people to take care of them. 855 450 free. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status Case of the Mondays Followed by a frowny face It got one like and five comments, including Dislike Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment To turn that emoji's frown upside down In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future Hosted by you Hashtag happy face Hashtag savings Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance we live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com.
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-450-free, 855-450-3733. We might be able to squeeze you in here. You know, if you go sure. over to, to cam.freetalklive.com, then you can watch how close we come to just, like, not doing a radio show in here sometimes. <laughs> I was typing in sort of the, the description for the podcast. It's, there's no excuse, a good excuse for this. So, <laughs> terribly sorry. 855-450-free. Let's get right to the calls here. Uh, tele in Austin. Tell A, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, hey, guys. Um, uh, on the environmental tip there, um, I've been thinking lately, uh, we've, we've got the, the EPA and, and then there's the FAA and all that sort of stuff. And, and when it comes to kind of the larger issues that we wouldn't really put just in like regular consumer market stuff, we just farm it off to some government agency, but they usually do a really bad job of it. Yes. And uh, yeah, so so I think it's people kind of absolve themselves of, of whatever they feel their responsibility is by by you know by supporting these these types of things. And, yeah, and let's like turn this over to some some people that call themselves. Or, we'll turn this over to some people that call themselves experts, and uh, then I don't have to think about it anymore because I've I've already done the right thing, which is just to advocate for something and um, you know pay my taxes. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it makes people feel good even though they haven't lifted a finger. But it's as as you guys know, it's like a revolving door between the the regulated and the regulators. So that doesn't work out so well. Indeed. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, that was just uh, just. I always also think there's also kind of an argument uh, that you might be able to use uh, to talk to people that are just about status and 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 point out that we've got all these agencies and if they fail they just get more funding and all that sort of stuff but every other issue we deal with is pretty much taken care of by consumer reviews or if you want to pay to get you know something like consumer reports you can get the real deep dirty information about stuff so, yeah, yeah i mean we we there. we just that people want to take the responsibility yeah we go through this in perpetuity that there's this mass movement of people in the world who just think that uh, the, the, the answer to every single problem is government violence. And then we come on here and we say, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe handing it over to the guys who started the Iraq war is not the best plan <laughs> on how to peacefully resolve your differences, ladies and gentlemen. And right. then they call us fringe lunatics and throw us in prison when we don't want to pay their taxes. And uh, it's uh, it's extraordinarily, extraordinarily frustrating to look at i mean the the the, the epa the epa is going to uh to to save the environment we're gonna we're gonna save the whales save the snails save the what's the george carlin bit and you know it uh it doesn't seem to be panning out so well folks and then what your answer to this problem is ultimately to extinct the human race is what it sounds like and well no no for me what it, i think it's just what what i find most annoying is, is essentially when i say look i'm not inter I, I i'm not interested in paying into social security um i'm not interested in um you know whatever this government program is one with you know the to, to give 
to get food to poor people through uh, welfare. I'm not interested in doing that. Suddenly I hate poor people or I hate old people or I hate roads because I don't want to uh, fund them through uh, the, the systems that they're fund, funded through now. You no. hate the Western black rhino. Mark. Right. No, no. What I hate is bad and inefficient forms of funding. What I would like to see is these problems solved more efficiently Better solutions where people are held accountable. Because right now, the Western Rhino's, uh, you know, dead, gone, and whoever wrote these rules on the trading and horns or, um, isn't in jail. They, they haven't had the one tiny thing happen to them. They might feel a little bad, but the government constantly fails its way to bigger budgets. It's the only organization that can do it. <laughs> Telly, thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's yeah. extraordinarily four fifty free. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's it's just you you look at this, and I mean, it's so obvious at times, right? You look at it and you say, like, look, here's a very clear link to this the the explanation of this problem, and people just choose not to see things as they are, right? I mean, Walter Williams had a piece in townhall.com today talking about uh, reality might be optional, right? And I and I sort of talked about this on here and on my show, that there are people who don't believe that reality exists. And Ian says, well, you can't prove that it does, and <laughs> all of this stuff. And it's a fundamental detachment from the physical realm that you actually live in, and yeah. people absolutely make a choice to do it. And there's a mass movement of people who just uh, think that uh, reality is bad, violence is good, and we have to stop breeding, and maybe we should kill a whole bunch of people in the process. It doesn't sound like the, a really good combination of events, uh, and you wouldn't push a button to stop that. <laughs> well, if you push a button to end the state, and that's what you're referring to, you're not going to get rid of stupidity, and you're not going to get rid of people's uh, belief in the concept of the state. So uh, all you're going to get is a new one in its place in relatively short order. All the state is is the most successful gang in a given geographic area. So what you will get is um, you know, a bunch of violence as people attempt to set the new one up. So if you're saying so you got a bunch of violence now, when they already have it, you, well, no. What we have is a lot of threats of violence. But like, but like, no. That's the that's the same. I don't draw any distinction okay. between the two. Well, um, the, if uh, the government tells me that I've got to send them thirty three percent of the money that I earn, um, I get to choose between that and prison. I'm going to take the thirty three percent of the money I earn over prison, even though it's an act of violence. Right? right? Like I agree with you. It's an act of violence to threaten somebody, but being thrown in prison to me is a worse act of violence. Right. I, but when the new state comes to collect thirty three percent of your income and you shoot them in the head and everybody's like, I don't know if that government is entirely legitimate or not. Yeah, sure. I get where you're coming from on that, but uh, they'll just collect the weapons, which exist in uh, abundance. How are they going to collect the weapons? They haven't formed a state yet. They're going <laughs> to collect the taxes before they could take the guns. So when they come around and they say, hey, we're the new government, and you say, go F yourself. I don't think so, pal. Uh, I don't think it's going to pan out too well for them. I, I just think that there's, uh, you know, the, the vast majority of the population um, on planet Earth and in the United States aren't ready for this. And when you have that large of a portion of the population that aren't ready, that you're going to have negative ramifications. Now, you're arguing about do a you think that the state, fantastic situation. Do you think that the state is uh, doing a good job of keeping all these idiots in line? Um I suppose. I, mean, I, I think that in the absence of the state that they're going to have to come to grips with the economics of the world that they live in, they're not going to be sitting there like, oh, well, there's a social security plan that's going to take care of me in my old age. And that's why I love the government, because they do everything for me. They're going to say like, I don't know, there's a bunch of guys over there who want to violently rule over all of mankind. I'm not sure that that's the most brightest of ideas. Maybe I should go over there and tell them not to. I, I, I agree that the one thing that uh, current states have, as though I could push a button to stop this, um, that what they have is legitimacy. Um, that essentially the, the thing that separates the old thieves from the new thieves is legitimacy, flags, patriotism, nationalism, people putting their hands over their hearts and saying, uh, you know, I, I love you, Mr. Flag, and, um, and all the dead soldiers you represent. Uh, I, I get that that's, uh, that's what the problem is, but, uh, you know, this question, this fantastic question of whether or not I would push a button to end the state, I don't think is particularly productive because the uh, when, when I answer, which is I wouldn't because 
people are too dumb to handle freedom. Why today. are they dumb? Because they've been raised in public schools. Because they've been bombarded with anything. feminist and environmentalist propaganda. And who's funding these organizations? Do you think that there would be people running around saying, "Hey, we've got to extinct the human race because of a Western black rhino"? If the government wasn't paying them to do that, the governments fund this stuff because it tells them to tax to, to raise taxes because taxes are going to change the weather and that's going to save the Western black rhino. <laughs> that's that is in fact what they say, and I think that we'll get solutions to the uh, the problem of global climate change from the private market far better than from governments. But governments will attempt to extract money from people I to solve the problem. I have a lot of faith in the power of the market. I don't think that the market is going to change the change of climate. Climate changes, and markets. Mo- do market things. <laughs> They're well, not weather. It's not for sale. The, the fact is, is that if you, uh, you know, from what I understand, all they have to do is put particulate matter in the air. Um, if a volcano erupted, a big enough volcano erupted on Earth right now, that uh, that would throw us into a situation where this have, from the chemtrail denier. What? Uh, yes, I don't. Be, uh, I don't. Believe, One of the two that's on the show. By the way, I'm going to need better uh, evidence of uh, chemtrails before I go for it. Are yes. you are you suggesting free market chemtrails that people should start spraying? aluminum and barium from the sky in order to control climate change because somebody paid them to do so? People will do that uh, if if that's what it takes to, uh, they believe that's what it takes to save the planet. Currently, people are buying Priuses and doing a variety of things in order to, you know, solar panels and stuff like that in order to cut down their carbon footprint because they believe that that's going to be a solution. And, and it's going to stop them from breeding as well. What, what's, the, what's the good of breeding? What's the value in it? <sighs> There's not a particular value in it. I mean, you know, practicing, I like that, but I mean... The, the, the human race is full of people who are trying to destroy itself, and the people who have the answers to the problem don't want babies. Seven billion people on the planet. I don't think we're going to get extinct tomorrow. 855... What am I giving this for? Almost all of them suck. ChristopherCantwell.com, FreeTalkLive.com. Thanks very much. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,293 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $224. 
Antiwar.com reports while talking up a new round of humanitarian aid, White House officials said no new military aid would be sent to Iraq at this time, a de facto rejection of Prime Minister Haider Abadi's recent call for more weaponry. The White House is not representing it as a rejection, however, denying that Abadi ever specifically brought up the request for more arms during his White House visit. Abadi's calls for more weapons were repeated and loud during his visit to the U.S., however, and if he did not bring it up in the closed-door meeting with President Obama, it would only be because he was told beforehand he would not be getting any. The U.S. has struggled to justify its repeated influxes of military aid to Iraq, both because of the Iraqi military tendency to lose billions of dollars worth of advanced